Welcome Come back on. to the uh, Brick and Easter Broadcast Network. Yes. <laughs> Hello. I know we had a little bit of technical difficulties at the beginning, yes. but uh, we've got them all sorted out and glad mm -hmm. to be here the day after yeah. Thanksgiving. How was your Thanksgiving? I know you don't celebrate, uh, Remy. Uh, it was good. I did not work and I did not go out shopping at six in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> did not want to deal with any of that nonsense. So it was, I tell it was you, very relaxing. I did not go anywhere. I mm -hmm. haven't, I've been, you know, feeling a little uh, under the weather, I think, because of the barometric pressure changes that happen yes. when the rain starts to hit. But uh, I just went to take my dog out for a walk. And uh, it was just nice because everything has been just so calm, you know, when they're not, when you're not near the mall, <laughs> when you're near the mall, then that's another story. But uh, why don't you go ahead? You said you uh, had a quick announcement you wanted to make and uh, a little yeah. statement from us. Yeah. Um, so we were talking, Naomi and I, I'm not addressing Naomi at this point. Um, <laughs> Uh, but after what happened in, in uh, Colorado Springs, we just wanted to make it very clear um, that this this place will always be a welcome and supporting place for the LGBTQ plus community. Uh, we have friends in that community, and honestly, it's just the right thing to do. Um, so this will always be a safe and supporting place uh, for all marginalized people. Absolutely. And as you know, Matthew Ashton has been a big part of Lego in Lego mm -hmm. leadership. And he's also come out with several really wonderful sets. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to express our support for the LGBTQ community. And, yeah. and many of you know, we have uh, several good friends there. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, be nice to each other. And if you have questions about any of these issues, DM me. I will help you. That's all we will say. <laughs> Um, Brick literacy. Yeah. If you're not following him already, you yeah, can no. uh, do that. Seriously, DM me. <laughs> um, happy to answer any questions, help you with whatever you need. Right. Um, but yeah. So let's talk about the Marvel episode. And we're super excited because, um, you know, we, we ask, you know, the builders to join us and some of them say yes. yes. And that <laughs> makes us really happy. Um, so yeah, I think, are we ready to bring on our special guests? I think so. Um, we're, we're very excited to have them both. They agreed to be on our, our little channel here on YouTube. And, uh, also it's the day after Thanksgiving because I yeah. said, I know that it's the holiday weekend and you may have other plans, but we do broadcast regularly on Fridays after the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also been really great. I'm really excited to meet these two because you've had some really good um, side conversations. At least we've had some side conversations with some of your castmates who just think the world of you. So I'm really excited to chat with both of you. And we have in the waiting room here, please help me welcome, first of all, Greg Tull. How are hey, you doing, Greg? I'm doing great. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Awesome. Great, great to be, be here with you. And I think Brendan is uh, working out some logistics. So we're, yes. he's, he's close. He's close. I think he's close to, to being with us. So we're going to um, wait to, to um, see when he's ready. But in the meantime, Greg, while, uh, while we're waiting for Brendan, and you have to ask, I have to ask the question, did I get to the spelling of his name correct? Yeah. You did. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, because so, I looked at it. So tell us a little bit about that while we're waiting. Right, so we now. filled out, you know, like 5,000 different forms to be a part of the show yeah. where Brendan is clearly spelling his own name correctly. And then when <laughs> they do all the cast announcements on Instagram, they spell his name Brandon. And we're like, guys, <laughs> like, did no one look? Was like, how many how many times was his name written down correctly? And then everyone on the show referred to him that way. I'm sure whoever's doing the social media marketing is a different group of people, but... I don't know why someone did. They were like, all oh, right, Brandon and Greg, you know, and just type <laughs> and sent it. And like, yeah. Well, I sent you a corrected one and you are welcome to use that. I've done that mm -hmm. also for tacos and Michelle because Christine prefers to be referred to as tacos. Yep. And I've also Straight sent up. one to Yo-Yo and Crash Love because it. that's how they like to be referred to. So you're welcome to have that. 
And I, yeah. I know uh, Brendan, um, I think he can hear us because he's working on his camera issues, but we will continue to promote that and make sure people get it right. <laughs> so, <laughs> moving you. forward, because I, yeah. I don't know why. I mean, Fox has a big budget. I mean, I'm a little um, streamer here, right. and I have just rudimentary Photoshop skills. <laughs> but I was hey, able maybe, to get it Maybe that's work. why you're small, and so you care more. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yes, we do I care a lot. Brendan Gates. Yeah, uh, I, we, will, we will get that sorted. <laughs> well, we know that, um, and, and I went just so you know, the reason why it's important to me is that I went to uh, a long time ago, um, the Dale Carnegie um, training, and they wow. talked about yeah. the person's name is the most mm -hmm. important sound mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. So you always want to get it right. And that's why yeah. when we have people on the show who have, you know, maybe some names that are hard to pronounce. My last name is Takeuchi. So I get this all the time. Mm -hmm. And so when I saw that, I go, I'm going to check this because his social media has it different. Yep. But yet what Fox <laughs> has been promoting has it different mm -hmm. spelling. So I checked and I'm glad you could verify that. So yep. on the Brick and Issa Broadcast Network, we do have it correct. And I'm going to mm -hmm. add him into the chat, hoping that yes, his let's... video is going to stabilize. And please help me welcome cool. Brendan. <laughs> Hey, there we go. Yep. Hang on. He might. He has been having some video issues on and off. So, but we mm -hmm. just wanted you to know, Brendan, if you can hear us, we have your name correct. The spelling is correct, and we will continue to promote that as much as we can, so that maybe, <laughs> you know, more and more people will know how to how to uh, address you. <laughs> so. I appreciate that. All right. And, uh, sorry for the. Sorry for the unstable video. I'm actually at my in-laws' house for the holidays, so oh, uh, no worries. Not the greatest. Here. Well, if you drop in and out, that's okay. I and mean, yeah. we're we okay. we know that with streaming, it's happened to me several times. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, Remy even said a couple times, "Oh, Naomi's gone. <laughs> She'll be back." <laughs> so <laughs> no. we're very casual here, but um, we just appreciate the fact that you're willing to share uh, your experience with us about being yeah. on the show. And uh, right, thank right. you for uh, telling us that we did, uh, the Brick and Issa Broadcast Network did get your name spelling correct, and we're going to keep promoting that. So I'm kind of curious about, um, you know, you have seven members, siblings, you had mentioned on um, the tree episode. There's so, eight, eight kids in the family. So there's four kids. boys and four girls. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Wow. So what is your birth order, if you don't mind me asking? I'm just kind of curious. If are, are either of you the firstborn? No, we're numbers four and five. So we're the oh, two wow. Kids. Oh, wow. Wow. Yep. So, so were, were you ever, um, I, I guess, influenced in, by your older siblings with regard to Lego? I would. Yeah, probably. Well, Brendan, I guess you can answer when it comes to the technic side of things, at least like Mindstorms or something. But for me, my yeah, older brother Rob <clears throat> was involved. And I remember I remember in particular, he built this submarine. Uh, it was all mm -hmm. red, but this was when he was a teen at the time. And it was really, it was quite good, you know, for mm -hmm. it was like a teenager's fan creation. It's really solid. It's well thought out, you know, and there's all the different functions inside, like crew quarters and kitchens. Wow. You know, and I was, I was like, this is the coolest thing ever, you know. And and so I am about five years younger than Rob, five six years younger than Rob. And you know, I remember looking at that and being like, that's amazing. And so I would, I I suppose to some degree, maybe inspired by Rob to even as a child to think mm -hmm. about taking the brick further, at least with system. I'm not. I can I can handle myself with Technic, but I wouldn't consider myself much of a Technic builder. But I'll I'll toss it to Brendan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, similar. So um, Rob kind of had the first Lego collection in the family. Mm -hmm. uh, so admittedly, that he you know he gets credit for my first exposure. And I hadn't thought of it until Greg mentioned it, but definitely uh, Mindstorms and the robotic side of things was very inspirational. He had the old robotic discovery set. And uh, oh, after a while, he kind of passed that along to me. He didn't officially give it to me, but he allowed me to tinker with it quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, to the point that I, I had to have one of my own. I eventually bought the NXT. <laughs> so it, have you been keeping up then with all of the releases with the uh, various uh, EV3 and the new Spike Prime and some others that, that have come out? Are yeah, you, are you always up to date now? Yeah, I, I, I'm roughly familiar. I kind of keep an eye on them. Uh, admittedly, I haven't done much of that recently, but definitely, in, definitely as a kid, that was a big deal. 
And did you ever go into competitions as well um, growing up uh, with Lego? No, we were kind of homebodies. Uh, we lived out in the country. We pretty much only went into town when uh, when we had an errand or something that needed to be done. So oh, wow. uh, I wouldn't say there was really opportunity for that. Well, yeah. Did they have first Lego League back then or anything like that? Or I have no idea. Not, not that <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Um, well, I think both of you, um, and, and I had started by um, mentioning to um, at the start of the call before uh, we brought you on that um, I'm very excited to meet both of you because of your generosity of spirit, because we've heard from a couple different um, cast members. So the first one I wanted to mention was the grandpappies. And mm -hmm. in our interview with the grandpappies, they specifically mentioned you because of your help um, with them putting on their little satellite onto or their little space oh, station onto yeah, the satellite space station. station. One, yeah. And mm -hmm. I think it was Carrie who mentioned specifically, he said, you know, we were having problems because the space station kept moving. And without hesitation, you went up and you helped them out and you just said, we got this. Mm -hmm. And you held it for them so that they could put it on there. So I just, you know, I, I, I've heard already several stories about this. So the, the second story was from Ethan and Dom mm -hmm. about how you took them out for sushi and how you've <laughs> become their older brothers and just this kind of warm spirit there. And the third one we just saw in the recent episode where uh, Natalie, or not Natalie, Stacy and Nick, <laughs> Stacy and Nick came mm -hmm. over to ask you to help them move their, their golf um, structure into mm -hmm. their, into their space. So I just wanted to thank you for just showing that spirit of yeah. just warmth and helpfulness mm -hmm. because you hear so much about competitions where they're, you know, like trying to, you know, make sure that the other person doesn't get through fast enough and they just kind of stand by the side. But the both of you just expressed that. And I just wanted to mm -hmm. thank you for that. And I'm just curious, was that uh, something you were always brought up with as kids as far as, you know, always helping people out or where, where does that come from? Uh, honestly, that is a part of it. Um, you know, our our parents are Christian. We were raised Christian. I'm a Christian. Uh, that's very important to me. And so, you know, we wanted we wanted a fair fight. We even told people that, like, if we win, it's we want it to be because we earned it, fair and square. You know, and so we only wish the best for everyone, and we just want to mm -hmm. show, um, you know, kindness and generosity and, and a helpful spirit. Like, right. I don't I don't wish uh, evil upon anyone. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brendan said it. He said it well. You know, you, you want to see, you want to win because everyone's at their best, and mm -hmm. and and maybe you did better, and not because somebody else had a failure. So, right. you know, it actually it's a crying shame because the episode that just released last night. So a little mm -hmm. behind the scenes for you. Yeah, Brendan and I were actually done with our Marvel build um, <coughs> an hour and a half before the time was up. Oh wow! And oh wow! It was very. <laughs> Oh, it was an hour and a half. It was 90 minutes. Yeah. Wow. Um, there were very specific criteria for that build. So kind of once we reached a certain point where it was like we had done what we were supposed to do, there wasn't mm -hmm. really anything left to do. Right. It was kind of like, OK, we're like we're finished. And uh, Marvel actually gave us a very specific um, rule when it came to those models that we were not supposed to take like any kind of creative interpretation or anything it was to be an exact replica oh, really? of mm -hmm. the shot from the movie right so it's like well once you've done everything you do the shot in the movie, you're like i mean we don't have anything left to do so we actually spent a bunch of time in the last hour hour and a half of that challenge running bricks for other teams we're oh, literally wow. going over to tables and being like, hey, what do you guys need? And then like taking people's trays and going back and forth to Brickfit. And then they didn't put any of it in the episode. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, you heard it here. <laughs> you should take that clip and put it in there. Yeah, I think yeah. that will be, I think maybe like kind of their story for us, you know, is that like we're hardcore all the time. And, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. we certainly showed up to compete, right? Like we came to play, but yeah. at the well, same you also time, had the like, golden brick though, right? So once you <laughs> had the criteria done, you kind of say, okay, let's kind of rest on this yeah. one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a great story. See, once again, uh, it's just showing your spirit of kindness and generosity, which is just awesome. And so, so glad that you could share that with us. Yeah. And, and we also just to kind of give you a sense of the format, we're going to go through some of your builds specifically all the way through until um, the Marvel episode, then we're going to go through the Marvel uh, slides. So it may take about an hour and a half or so just to mm -hmm. kind of give you a sense. But um, any anything else you want to mention before we start getting into the slideshow? 
let's do it. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, speaking of competitive spirit, let's see how this goes. Okay, yeah, there we go. Uh, so here's the USS IG Phoenix from the first build. And this is the only shot I have of it because in that first episode, they really gave you guys 30 oh, seconds of screen time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and then in episode two, right? Like we were, yeah. there was actually a Reddit thread that said, uh, where the F did Brendan and Greg come from? Because yeah, I where, think it was like by guys? episode three or four, people were like, wait, who are these guys? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so maybe you can tell us uh, kind of what's going on in the interior here because there's like a guy lifting weights and there's something happening over here. So one of the you know big parts of this challenge, and I think the, the way that they ended up judging it was maybe a little bit different, but at least for, for us was, you know, we were told to build spaceships. So I think Brent and I took that pretty literally in terms of building spaceships and then imbuing mm -hmm. it with elements of our personality. Um, and so you see, a, you know, a paintbrush on the left wing, the gears on the right wing. Brendan's more engineering oriented. I'm more mm -hmm. artistically oriented. Okay. And then it has dual cockpits because we're brothers. You know, we work together. And then on the inside, um, Brendan is lifting a barbell and I'm about to get on a treadmill. So I also have like a towel and a water bottle because mm -hmm. we both oh. do a lot of fitness. <laughs> so there, we funny. did really. And then, you know, they like barely even showed our build. And it was kind of like, ah, you didn't really express yourself enough in it. And we're like, what do you mean, man? Like it's full of us. But, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Brendan, do you want to talk about like, you know, some of the like one of the that other surprise that we put in it, which they didn't even show and then like the wings and stuff? Yeah. So um, the judges came by and they were kind of asking for more personality because once again, they said build a spaceship. We're building a spaceship. So we're kind of thinking, how can we do this? We didn't realize at the time they wanted very kind of literal interpretations of personality, like a firefighter logo. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard. To, it's hard to to overlook and so yeah. at that point we were kind of we were kind of stuck on the path we were going we we're like well we just gotta branch out so maybe let's find other aspects of our personality so in the back we had built a little cargo bay uh there's actually a container it's removable but you can, the the black and yellow we kind of picked a slightly different color scheme yeah. for it um mm -hmm. and inside of there we put a bunch of medical supplies it was all red and white kind of like red cross theme. Oh. and built i think some little red plus signs to to kind of hint at that um right. and during the presentation we kind of opened those doors like a little surprise and showed them that but it didn't really seem to do anything for us i guess <laughs> okay and jonathan um, and xavier yeah. had the same thing where they had the mech and they had a person inside the mech and they even showed that but it never made any screen time either yeah yeah, yeah. so getting these little easter yeah. eggs fun yeah, I mean it's a, it's a very cool starship. Like you can tell from a distance immediately what it is. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, I'm glad that because I was curious about what this was. I was. I'm glad yeah, I guess that icon cool. didn't read as well as I had hoped. But uh, it, it just, kind of reminded me of the, the Batwing too. I didn't know if you had any inspiration from the Batwing when you um, built this. A little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would say specifically. Maybe like unintentionally. Oh. <laughs> I think it came up in conversation though while we were building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We figured the did. orange would be enough to set it apart. Yeah. yeah. I was just thinking Vic Vipers personally. Like, what if we made like sort of oh, a massive yeah. version of a Vic Viper? And so mm -hmm. that was kind of the idea behind the. Yeah. I don't know if you can the tell, but the wings, wings. sloped upwards a little bit. That V shape that Greg's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so to Brendan's point, if you took the ship and you laid it down on its belly, the mm -hmm. wings are actually sloped up like this. Oh. They're not flat. They're sloped up. And Brendan engineered a whole Technic system underneath. I mean, those things are rock freaking solid. Wow. Um, so it's hard to tell from this angle, but you can actually see there from the glare, right, on the left wing. That wing yeah, is not different. flat to the body mm -hmm. of the ship. It's actually, they're Whoa. both tilted up. So yeah, that shaping of that angle of the wings is even more dynamic, I think, than it shows from just some of these yeah. images. Yeah, it's actually why those gray slopes are there, right where the wings connect to the body. We're kind of strategically covering covering over the technic beams. Ah. Yep. <laughs> those studs don't quite connect because it's yeah. at an angle. Oh, interesting. Wow. No, See, really this cool, is though. good. I'm yeah. glad we're we're asking these questions because um, you know it's 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 unfortunate that there are so many teams, especially with episode one, that yeah. you, you don't get very much for yeah. each of the the builds. Yeah, I think there are a couple shots in there. If you pause it at just the right moment, 
the very little mm-hmm. screen time we had, you can kind of see on the table where <laughs> the framework is in place. Yeah. Oh wow. Um, but yeah, anyway, this was this was cool, and um, yeah. So let's move on to episode two, uh, which is my favorite, <laughs> by the way. Thank you. It's a, it's a very saucy <laughs> dinosaur giving us this look here, <laughs> looking back at us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. You know, one of the things that the judges told us after episode one was they were like, well, it felt like, you know, you built something very safe, like very normal. And we're like, well, of course, you know, we were trying to just build what we thought the challenge was, but apparently Mm -hmm. we we didn't quite. And then they were like, we can clearly see that you have a mastery of the brick. And so we want to see you push yourselves like Mm -hmm. don't don't go on glide mode in this competition. And so, well, and in terms of being safe, it's worth noting that we were also done pretty early in the first. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. (laughs) Yeah. I think we have like 30 minutes left at the end. Um, And you know, once like when you have something like a spaceship, right? Like once you're done building it, you're like, okay, like we're done building it. Like, you know, (laughs) Um, there were dimension locations. Yeah, there were. You're fast builders though, too. Just in. Yeah, we are. We are very fast. I mean, it's (laughs) just wicked fast when you watch some of the show yeah and actually this was this i always kind of appreciate this some of the other teams told us it was actually a little bit intimidating because they said you know we'd look across the room and we'd be like they've already done what <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah I think that was that was definitely a strength for ben and mm-hmm. i was being able to just throw down a mm-hmm. lot of brick so this i mean this brontosaurus sculpt like we were it was furious right from the jump like it was just non-stop really high bpm to get all of this done just because mm-hmm. there's so much in the model and i mean that bronto is like it's i think it's over three feet tall yeah. so mm-hmm. we wanted a really big uh, statement piece there yeah when oh, when we were cool. reviewing this episode um episode mm-hmm. two and we do a first second and third for like the olympics for every episode so we picked mm-hmm. because you didn't get picked by the judges as first and second we picked you as third yeah this was our bronze medal uh from <laughs> this, this was episode. our bronze medal winner uh, and, thank you uh, here it is Honorable covered man. in smoke and the height really made a difference too because yeah. if it was lower then the smoke would have just covered it all up too. yeah we didn't and know that- it was gonna be that smoky either yeah, but one of our objectives was actually to build a model tall enough that it would kind of remain above the effect. We we mm-hmm. didn't do that on purpose. So, you know, when it came out and you had this massive smoke cloud, we were super proud of the fact that it was yeah. like the, the top of the brontosaurus is still very clear the whole time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't really tell, but one of the gunpowder trails goes under his belly and be- between his legs. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's fun. So you can and- kind of see the tail end of it here where it's burning, but uh, it's it's kind of tough to see. Yeah. Yeah, um, we've heard from several of the contestants that the um, the timing with the pyrotechnic team was also very important. So, did you have certain cues that you had them them do for yours as well? I mean, no, we um, actually kept it pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, because some people had kind of like chain reactions, or the effect was mm-hmm. supposed to cause something in their build. Ours was right. static, so that wasn't really relevant for us. Okay. Right. We heard from uh, John and Xavier that they told them once the car hits the ground, then a half a second later, do the other charge. And then we heard from the grandpappies that they told them the order of the charges, but the pyrotechnic team put it in reverse. And unfortunately, that didn't the, the whole storyline didn't come across the mm-hmm. same way. And Debo Bricks is here. Hi, Debo. And yes, I love the color choices too for the Brontosaurus. That was uh-huh. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. What was the what was the reasoning behind those those colors? Visual impact. Lots of parts available in red and yellow. Mm-hmm. It actually started out. If you look at the legs, there's a little more yellow and orange. And and when the Brickmasters came by, they were kind of like. Make sure it doesn't look like a giraffe. So we made sure to add plenty of red as it faded. No, after. that was on purpose, though. We actually did design it this way from the beginning with the intention okay. of doing the ombre. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we we were intentionally starting out yellow, but that was like a caution. And it was like, don't worry. It's not just going to be yeah, an all yellow. We, we made sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Well, well, I wasn't I think, even thinking giraffe until just now. <laughs> and yeah. the comment we had, too, when we reviewed the show is that if you were to just do a quick slideshow of all the builds, yours stands out clearly as a dinosaur build. 
Whereas the other ones had islands or they had like a little scene of, you know, some, some activity going on. Yours says dinosaur yeah. <laughs> and it was That's very nice. prominent. Yeah. Appreciate it. I think yeah. it too. Oh, sorry. Just your former question about the color. I think also part of the reason we did red is we were talking about some different colors and we didn't want to do, you know, earth tones, which I think is how we commonly think of dinosaurs being colored. Mm -hmm. And red felt like a bold enough color without being too far out. You know, if you built a pink dinosaur, I think you'd be like, ah, it's maybe a little bit much, pink dinosaur, right? But you're like, okay, red feels like it could still be kind of a, a realistic color. Maybe like right. you could have more red colored dinosaur. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And you don't want to go purple because then you'll be doing right. Barney, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll be infringing on trademark. And that's yeah. that's even worse, right? Yeah. No, this was um, great. We, we absolutely love your dinosaur. Yeah. It's adorable. Um, but okay, so now episode three. Kelsey, the cactus queen, um, and you had you had worked out the mechanism to to get it to just kind of stay. I don't know the proper term for it. I'm not an engineer, sorry. But um, tell us some more pivot, about is that. What we're looking for? What's that? Is pivot yeah, the pivot, word we're looking pivot, for? Pivot, pivot mechanism, but, pivot, but also stay balanced. <laughs> We heard from Aaron, um, Aaron, no, Liz. We heard from Liz that she said after the episode was over, you were racking your brain about why didn't it work? So you went back and re-engineered it again. <laughs> so that, is that, is that true? Did that, did that really happen? Uh-oh, is Brendan frozen? Uh, possibly. That's okay. I think Brendan's frozen. Well, she, she mentioned well, I was it. definitely going to let Brendan take it, but I'll, I'll answer on his behalf. So, um, mm -hmm. so ultimately it was a great design and Brendan did a really good job putting it together. It was a crazy amount of engineering and, um, Jamie was wicked impressed by it, which is super cool when you can impress yeah. you know, an already technically oriented Lego designer. And the thing is that it's actually two systems of turntables, one, which allows forward backwards motion. And then another set inside of that set, set 90 degrees off that allows side to side motion. So it can actually roll around. And then we use tires taken off of the wheels to create shock absorbers on all the outside so that, you know, you have some rubber absorption from that impact mm -hmm. as she would roll. Um, ultimately what failed is there are the three by three turntables are those pivot points for the mechanism. We'd have the five by five that would have been, or, Five, there might be six. Uh, there's a larger turntable. They didn't have those in the brick pit, just the small ones. Mm. So ultimately, mm -hmm. that's what happened is actually, even when she hit the ground, she was like entirely intact. So it was wicked strong building. But right. what happened for her to break was actually those turntables separated from each other. Ah. And so what we went back and did afterwards, and then what Brendan re engineered, um, he just worked in studio and did it digitally was to create a reinforcement mechanism to essentially lock the turntable together from either side. Mm. To be honest, Naomi and Remy, I think if we had done that in the model, I actually think she would have ridden all the way and never broken. Right. Wow. right. And that's what was interesting is that um, it goes back to the way you think is that it's like you want to be your best and you know that this could have worked in concept. Yeah. So we're going to mm -hmm. go back and re-engineer it again. So that's mm -hmm. just super impressive too. No, that's cool. Uh, and also, it was a fun character, too. Like, where, yeah. did, where did the character of the Cactopus Queen come from? Um, man, I'm sorry. I keep trying to give Brendan some, some time here. But yeah, no. we're going we're gonna to keep trying. <laughs> I, I know it. the internet goblins are, are out tonight. but Yeah, yeah right. So, um, so you know, it's, it's Western. And so we're mm -hmm. thinking, okay, like, we want to do something Western themed, but we didn't want to do something obvious, like just doing a cowboy. I mean sure that's fine but like that's what you would expect mm -hmm. and so we wanted to do something that was that was more stand out than that and so a cactus is a very western thing but by turning it into sort of a cactus alien right or <laughs> this uh, cactus themed alien right like now you have yeah. something that's kind of out of the world it's very it's unusual but it's still sort of western themed so the oh the other thing was we just decided to uh challenge ourselves a bit more there was a requirement for you to have at least four appendages and there was a minimum link for all the appendages if you lost um, two appendages, then your rider would be considered out, oh. even if the rest of the model stayed on. So we yeah. decided to add two more appendages <laughs> just, to, just to flex. Just to, I think we're like, yeah. well, let's make four tentacles just to <laughs> yeah. prove that we can do it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That's a good strategy, though, too, yeah. because, yeah, we heard the same thing from Carrie and Patrick because 
they said um, their feedback was that the arms were too fragile. So they just took the arms off. So then that mm -hmm. way they couldn't fall off and they just yeah, had yeah. the two legs. So you went the other way, you went with extra. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, but yeah, there she is. There's the limbs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, no, this, this was a really fun build. <laughs> and, you know, and it still did reasonably well. You know, I think you guys still got to level six or something. Yeah, we got to level so, six. Yeah, I, I will say for my part on this build, it definitely it does look a little bit messy uh, when you step back because there's there's just a lot going on in the model, mm -hmm. and it can be. Here's recommendation for other people if you you know other potential Lego masters. So if you ever get on the show, just make sure throughout any challenge, every you know hour or two, step back from your model and look at it from 10, 15 feet away because mm -hmm. you're right on top of it at the build table, right? right? And mm -hmm. and when you're right on top of it, you're looking at it and you're like, oh, I can add details here. I can do this, I can do that other thing. Like this would be really nice. And I think as a mock builder, you tend to think like that too. But of course, right. the restriction that you're trying to do all this quite quickly, right? But then sometimes when you mm -hmm. stop and you take a couple steps back or you take a few steps back from your table and you're looking at it and you're like, from a distance, that actually doesn't read so well. <laughs> and uh, you'll hear him talk about this on the um, Bricks Masters podcast. They talk about this where they say, mm -hmm. you know, it's like the one foot, three foot, 10 foot rule. Like, right. does your model look good from 10 feet away? Then you step into yeah. three. Are there more things I want to see? And when I get really close and I'm looking at the little details, are those are there those little details and stories? And so Kelsey was good at one and three feet. But if you, like, step back to 10 or 15 feet, she just kind of started, <laughs> like, blend together. So, you know, that's uh, something to think about. And we're, you know, we're we're learning. We're figuring it out. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a of... question from the chat, too. So how did you join those tentacle segments? Yeah. So that was a little, uh, we thought of it kind of like a human limb. So there's actually ball mm -hmm. joints between all of the tentacle sections, but we mm -hmm. know that ball joints can have a tendency to come apart under force because, you know, it's a kid's toy. So uh, I don't think of it like a kid's toy, but they're designed to be a kid's toy, right? right. So, so what we did is we actually took the cord, the like Lego cord, and every section on both sides of the ball joint in the whole limb. In fact, if you go up to her, her hand on the right hand side you can actually see it just before the hand you can see the cord right there on oh, all yeah, of those ball joints we locked cord uh. under upright bricks bracket lock plate lock on the outside of the bracket lock so it is impossible for those bricks it's like impossible for those bricks to come apart oh, it'll wow. take just an absurd amount of force and in between those layers of plates on the inside we have locked the cord and so that cord runs all the way through the tentacle limbs Mm -hmm. and through her hands on the arms wow. and so that way we knew that even if the ball joint separated under centrifugal force of the bull the mm -hmm. limb itself would still not come apart oh wow and how many how many cord pieces did you have to connect oh boy i probably connected like eight of them per limb wow Let's see that's we brilliant to see some of the structure in here but it doesn't mm -hmm. give us a good look at the cord piece but yeah that's that's very strong and very complex. Wow. Yeah. Um, Leave it yeah, up to Brendan nice. and I to over-engineer any <laughs> given challenge. And, and when we get to the uh, castle challenge, <laughs> I think the feedback that Amy gave you was spot on, yeah. which was great. Thank you. Um, we'll get okay. there, though. Yeah, so moving on, here's the PK Clubhouse. Yeah. Um, and this is, you know, one one building hut whatever for each of your siblings correct mm -hmm. yep uh so what what is this uh what are these down here because i think these two are the only ones that they didn't yeah talk about. so that's a v8 engine block okay down there on my my brother's to my brother tony's pod and then you mm -hmm. can just see behind it it's a minifig scale grand piano which is oh. actually a really beautiful mini sculpt and yeah. then they <laughs> didn't show it at all even Liz yeah. and Aaron were like, oh, my gosh, you know, they, they both teach music. And they're like, we're going to steal that and put it on our pirate ship. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so there's a there's a mini fix go grand piano on there that I was, that I was mm -hmm. particularly proud of. Oh, that's awesome. Um, do you do any um, highlights on your Instagram account about these are behind the scenes of things you missed on, on the show? I, I don't really, to be honest. I'm currently working on developing a stop motion TV show with my film studio. And so yeah. Yeah, that's where a lot of my time goes. And I do mm -hmm. share like the, the, you know, highlight photos and things in the models on my Instagram. But um, mm -hmm. the only way you're going to get those guys behind the scenes is to see me in an interview like this. Uh huh. 
Okay, we we might have um, to do some sm another like quick segments, like shorts. Of yeah, honestly, honestly, we could do like two hours on all the technical builds yeah. that you guys have done on Absolutely. like just mechanisms. So yeah, if, if you're up uh, for that, let us. Yeah, know. if you get the opportunity, like you. We'll definitely have to try this again at a time when Brendan can get on because you should yeah. certainly spend some time talking to him about we'll get there, but the episode seven build, which was the flying whale camp. Um, yeah. because that's probably the most technically advanced thing that's ever been created on the show. And it's insane. Yeah. We'll get there. But uh yeah, so mm -hmm. you see my oldest brother Rob. Sorry, another little note. Growing up mm -hmm. on the farm, because there were eight kids, to help keep things separated, my parents gave every kid an assigned color. So uh -huh. like all of your dishes, you know, your cup, your plate, your bowl, all the stuff, everyone had assigned colors, so you know exactly what was what. Like Oh, take care of your own. And, yeah. and then also you could be like, Hey, somebody didn't take their dishes into the kitchen. Well, you know exactly whose dishes they were. <laughs> cause it was that kid's color. So it, you know, made accountability easier and also helped prevent arguments from like, that's a great plate. It's obviously Tony's. So, right. um, so each pod is built in each of the siblings assigned colors and then they're themed around some of the siblings interests. So, mm -hmm. you know, for Rob, he has a gaming console. He's the oldest. So I'm going to go in age order from oldest to youngest here. Rob's orange pod gaming console. He's mm -hmm. the oldest son. And then over mm -hmm. to the right, you have the purple one. That's my sister, Monica. And she is very big into plants. And so she's got, uh -huh. you know, little vines and bushes and flowers. And then just to the left of hers, the green one in the back, that's my Heather's sister. She's a horse trainer and a rider. Mm -hmm. So her green is her color. She's got the hay bales. And then there's the horse head sculpt on the back. Also pretty proud of that one. Um, yeah. yeah that, that one they actually showed on, yeah. the, on the show. So, yeah, that was and really then, cool. Uh, just for kicks, you know, you have a horse coming out of her pod, going across <laughs> this swinging bridge in a tree, which makes all the sense in the world. Uh, and then uh, if you move, yeah, right. If you move left again, you have the yellow pod. That's mine. And then the outside is um, like trees and roots. And there's a raccoon hanging on mm -hmm. the backside. I'm, I'm big into outdoors and outdoor is animals. Is that your so. spirit animal, the raccoon? Well, I, I don't know. I'm actually, th I like to tell people that if I had a spirit animal, it would be a white tiger. Um, oh. But yeah <laughs> i i do like raccoons so um and if you if you zoom out again it's below this main pot i think on the left hand side you can see the blue one just behind the red that's brendan okay. he's got gears and this kind of like big sci-fi looking gear underneath yep so he's very mm -hmm. engineering oriented and then mm -hmm. jess is the red one just to the left uh, she has the the actually they're like little train wheels or like and they're mine cart wheels, I think. But then uh -huh. uh, we're representing, they're representing dumbbells here. And then underneath, she's um, working out in a giant salad bowl. Right. Yeah, the giant, <laughs> the giant yeah. salad bowl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. funny. Yeah. And then Tony with the V8 and then Julia with uh, the piano. So, okay. Wow. Cool. What yeah, this was an amazing family and what a nice tribute to them, mm -hmm. too. Thank you. Yeah. Also, and I got to was... tell you, sorry, one little yeah. thing about the, the name. So, PK, which you know ended up kind of getting like spoiled a little bit in the show. We wanted to name it this, and we were not going to tell anybody because only our siblings would have gotten it. You know, this like imagination game we played growing up, and so we're like, oh, like what a great yeah. you know gesture to all of our siblings. They're going to be like, oh, it's me. oh, of course. And then you know, to other people, just be like, okay, cool, you know, whatever clubhouse, right? Yeah. And then uh, one of the producers came to me, and I forgot to tell Brendan about this, which is part of why he got frustrated with me in the mm -hmm. interview. And they were like, hey, dude, like, you're going to have to say what PK stands for. And I was like, I can't. Like, no, it's like a whole secret with my siblings. And they're like, yeah, but, like, people aren't going to know. And then they might think yeah. that it infers something that's not cool. So you're going to have to say what it is. And I was like, you're killing me, guys. So then they asked me in the interview, and I tried to tell them, like, very basically. And Brennan was like, what? I thought we were keeping this a secret. And, I was, and then after the interview, I was like, I – I the producer told me I did forget to tell you. Sorry, like, I forgot to tell you. Bad, I was forced. Yeah. <laughs> well, well no, yeah. The response well, of Brendan thing. was classic brother. Like what? You know how yeah. could you do that? It's like the family secret recipe that you gave right. away, yeah. right? <laughs> but yeah, I'm I'm sure the first question in every interview is like, oh, what does this stand for? Is it penalty mm -hmm. kicks? You're like, what is it? We're confused. Right. So. So, so um, Debo, our, our our resident wit, witty person, says the raccoon is actually the white tiger of North America. <laughs> no, I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately not that rare, but that's okay. Um, but and all right, we will forewarn you, too, that Remy does not like puns. But I, I told him you know, if he ever wants to be on Lego Masters, fine. he probably has to work on his puns because it that. seems like – the, there's a lot of airtime with all the puns that go on on the show. Oh boy! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but 
Um, before we do that, we got to talk about. Oh, okay. So this is episode five. Uh, this is the dog show, and this is one of the, your builds that you that they showed in this uh, segment here. Uh, so can you tell us uh, about this elephant? Because this is yeah. really amazing. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I think this elephant is terrible, but I appreciate the positive feedback. So mm -hmm. this elephant is actually something we built in auditions. Mm -hmm. This was a timed live build that we did with a relatively limited parts palette. Okay. And um, so this is a pretty short timeline. Here's the reason it frustrates me because mm -hmm. I do very detailed animal sculpts. I mean, like yeah. I did a, I did a giraffe at one point, which is three feet tall. And that was a two week model. I did um, an elephant, which was, I think, a four-day design. I did a fox that was, like, sitting upright. Like, it was, like, sitting upright looking at something in a field. And that was a couple-day design. And, you know, using slopes and curves parts and just really nice models. And mm -hmm. uh, – but they were done as commissions for somebody else. And mm -hmm, so they right. own the rights to them. And though mm -hmm. I'm allowed to use pictures of them in my own portfolio, I'm not mm -hmm. allowed to display them anywhere. So the show asked, because one of the things that we talked about is I was like, we got to episode five for the dog. And I was like, boom, baby, this is my wheelhouse. Like, let's go. I know exactly what yeah. to do. Right. And yeah. then they're like, oh, you know, you say that you know what to do. Like, we got to show your other animal builds as sort of like proof of your proof of what you're saying in the episode. And I was like, I can't give them to you. Like, I know that you saw pictures as during our, right. you know, for the portfolio, but, audition process, but like you can't put them on TV. <laughs> and so then you know, they have these really derpy like, animal right. builds. And I was like, this is not representative well, of what I do. But we okay. did get a comment, though, specifically uh -huh. about this build. And it came from the mm -hmm. grandpappies. Because you mentioned just now that this was during, you know, the the, the build challenges. Yeah. And they said, you know, they, they had to do a sphere. And then they look over and they see you build a sphere with an elephant on top. <laughs> and so this this has got to be that build that they were extremely yep. impressed with this is the one relative. yeah mm -hmm. and they were just like blown away they were just like the guy the dude put an elephant on top of the sphere yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but that's great knowing the backstory because um we know that you're always your own worst critic right all of us are like that <laughs> yeah, and true. even though yeah. this to you is not your best work. It just shows just in a short amount of time how comfortable you are with sculpting <laughs> and even using a limited yeah. palette. I mean, it's, yeah. it's brilliant. It really is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what's uh, really okay. cool is um, it actually, that model completely balances by itself. So we designed it at just a level to where, so obviously you can see the bricks are sitting at about a 45 in the ball because we wanted mm -hmm. to be able to, Brendan designed that ball. And by the way, it is perfect. Like the sphere yeah. is, you could not have built it better. And he freehanded it, right? Like he freehanded it. It looks great. But we wanted to set it at 45 degrees so it would be more visually dynamic than if the stripes were, you know, straight up and down. Um, right. So we actually designed it. And then he used the Pythagorean triple, which is a, a geometry equation to figure out how to set this angle in here for the elephant to balance on. Mm -hmm. And this whole thing balances by itself, even with the elephant standing on top. In fact, it's doing wow. it over in this corner of my studio right now, um, which is great. Oh, cool. And, you know, the, his one leg kind of curves in more to the middle. And then we did um, a balance offset with that other arm being out. So, yeah, it's, it's, pr it's pretty cool. But just like from an engineering perspective, it actually does balance by itself. I am definitely going to rewatch this portion of the stream <laughs> just to... <laughs> I mean, just the fact that you could put think about putting a sculpture on top. I'm sure that the the people evaluating all of the videos of this, you know, this competition, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going. These dudes, they can put <laughs> a sculpture on top of this. On you know, just just doing the sphere in general is mind boggling to to many, and just you know, you you just knocked it out of the park. It's just yeah. great. And like we said, the grandpappies were especially impressed. <laughs> just like, they build fast and they build a sculpture on top of the spear. It, it was great. I will admit we got a tiny bit lucky with the balance. Although Greg did a great job balancing the elephant itself. There was uh -huh. a spot where some of the lines of the sphere happened to line up. at just Yeah. Uh, so we did take advantage of that. But it was going to balance on just a very small platform in any case. Yeah. Right. Cool. Yeah. And just so you know, um, uh, we're we're going to try this with audio only for Brendan because I know that mm -hmm. the um, the the network is real spotty where you are. 
But, yeah, uh, sorry about that. Time, I actually drove to a spot where I got 5G, and even then it was being spotty. Oh, no, it's okay. We we, uh, we have your voice, which is great. And you can talk about this scene while we're waiting for yeah. Greg to come back. Oh, so this, yeah. is, this is the mad scramble. Uh, this is the discuss, melee of, yeah. you know, Well, the first, while, he was, while I was out, I trust he told you about the other animals that he actually built, because those deserve... Of yes. This, and even if we yes. don't get to look at them, like I said, you're your own yeah. worst critic, and <laughs> honestly, it was still a brilliant model on top of that mm -hmm. sphere. Yeah, we're we're still gonna say we like it, even if if you say it's not your best. <laughs> we have to ask you about this scene. Yeah, <laughs> and that's because uh, we've gotten inside information about the order. So, mm -hmm. so just I I need to ask about after the table went over because it yeah. seemed like. Ethan, who's in the back, he got there first. He grabbed the pink collar, got immediately out of the way. Then Crash, Stephen, came in second, knocked the table over. Jonathan <laughs> got there third and had grabbed the um, Murph collar for the French Bulldog. And then it was just like a mad scramble after Because <laughs> Jonathan's <laughs> on the floor here at your feet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm surprised Jonathan survived. Crash is not small. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, I think I think the table fortunately took the brunt of it, not uh, Jonathan. But, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it was literally like within a split second of, you know, having Ethan in there and then uh, Crash right behind him. So mm -hmm. Ethan almost died, but just managed to get out of the way and yeah. then the, the table ate it. So I think, you know, they were making some uh, comments about maybe they would try for the Dalmatian. And mm -hmm. obviously – Obviously, Crash felt pretty strongly about yeah. getting the Dalmatian. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, how strongly did you guys feel about getting a specific dog? I not super strongly, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, I could have taken any of them. Part of part of the reason that, for me personally, and Brent, to be honest, Brent was just really gracious to me in this episode because having done animals before, I was mm -hmm. like man like i can like i can i can just do this uh and so he was super gracious he engineered the feet which were awesome the paws with those uh mm -hmm. thin wheels in them so we use the, mm -hmm. the thin technic wheels so that unlike some of the other models you know mikey actually had wheels in his feet so he did yeah. really well on the turf and then mm -hmm. i i just almost didn't stop or look up for 11 hours just sculpt wow. sculpt 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 so you know did really mm -hmm. detailed uh, measurements to get all the proportions and everything for mm -hmm. him correct uh, but actually, part of the reason that I wanted a short-haired dog was because it would require us to be more true to the anatomy. So I could have done something like the pulley, but I knew that would be too easy. And so I wanted for, for I wanted to do it because I knew that this would be more of a challenge to right. get the anatomy correct. Because with short hair, it forces you to form the dog correctly, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, can't, you can't get away with anything because it's not being covered by fur. Um, mm -hmm. And so I actually... Having done it before, I wanted the challenge of, of having to be truer to the anatomy and, and to the sculpt. So I actually, Brendan was like, yeah, dude, I'm, I'm game for it. So I, I did want to get the Boston Terrier because he was short haired. And, mm -hmm. and I like him. Well, also, I was okay. curious because Mikey's colors with the white, the brown and the black and dark brown. Do you have more options in the brick pit also with the curves based on those colors as well? Not really. We wanted more dark yeah. brown, but there was very little. We used all the dark brown we could. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. And then since uh, you had mentioned the engineering part, and I, I'm curious, you mentioned about the legs. Was there also some special engineering for the neck to get the angle that way and also to reinforce it? As we saw, several of the other builders had problems with the neck. So what did you do something special as well there? Yeah. So, you know, with an engineering mind, I always try to approach things foundation first, you know, core, mm -hmm. frame, whatever your foundation is. So Greg probably already explained, we kind of had the, the boxes in the center of the head and the body. And so, you know, there wasn't this build ahead and then tried to attach it. Like we, we wanted to think it there from the beginning. And so we, we built, um, I just built a hinge or it's kind of a double hinge. There's like six different hinge plates in there. So it's pretty strong, uh, directly mm -hmm. connecting the head block, to some bricks that are attached to the body block, um, you know, and then kind of clamped it down with some plates and just made sure that it was real sturdy and then filled it in from there. So uh, we built the frame first and then we filled in around it. 
And Diva well, awesome. says, Mikey is the best Lego Masters build to date. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, this, this face is really good. The nose. Um, this is one, course, and I'm so glad they didn't destroy these models. Because it seems like almost every episode, like, Will has to put a hammer or a bat yeah, or, yeah. you know, a wrecking ball to things. And I, I was just so, so pleased that. You know, all, all the builds were just really nice representations, but you just knocked it out of the park. Thank you. And I heard Steven Erickson say in person that he thought this model was flawless. Oh. <laughs> and I yeah. happen to know that while um, a number of the other dog models, if not all of them, I don't know if all of them, but at least a number of the other dog models did get taken apart, I happen to know that Mikey did not get disassembled. Oh. And he is on... A producer's desk somewhere. Really? Wow. He, he lives on. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, that's another thing that we're going to be doing is we've invited some of the dog owners to come on the show in Love the future. It. Nice. And um, yeah. I, I'm hoping to get Mikey's owner as well. And, uh, and, and that's great. I think there was, though, you pointed out, I think, on Nick's stream about the back leg, that there is yeah. a flaw in the back leg that... You, you only see it from the wide angle shot. You don't see it in this yeah, shot. Yeah, this, this shot doesn't have the legs, but the legs are very like skinny and well designed. Thank you. Um, right. Yeah. But so there's. You pointed this out though on Nick's stream. So yeah. I only saw it after you mentioned it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so on the back leg, the, the back left one in particular. So uh, back yeah, left back left to, leg. To Mikey. Yeah. Um, we. We designed the legs around a very strong plate system because plates allow you to get a tremendous amount of strength in a relatively thin area. And we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure that the legs were proportionally correct to the rest of the body. So I had done this in other animal sculpts that I'd done before. So that was a very natural choice for me. Um, but because we staggered the angle of his leg so it looked like he was in a walking pose as opposed to just having four legs straight up and down, not as easy mm -hmm. as you might think, by the way. <laughs> in fact, I think we're the only team to do staggered. Yeah, legs. we definitely um, were. Yeah, I, I, it's, it was easy enough to set the so. plates and create the core for those legs, but that meant right. Greg mm -hmm. had to sculpt, like organically sculpt four separate leg shapes. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then obviously, you know, incorporate that back up into the body. So, um, mm -hmm. Now, by the time you got all the way up to sort of the hip area, it's, you know, that difference is less pronounced. That wasn't too difficult. But uh, on those back legs in particular, uh, particularly with the back left one, where it's the most stepped backwards, plates come down and then they sort of step as they go backwards. And what we had done is we had used brackets with slope bricks on the front to sculpt out those steps, right? So that the legs sort of smoothly going up into the hip. And mm -hmm. we were man, we were pedal to the metal for this build all the mm -hmm. way through. Like, and we literally were right down to the wire getting done sculpting Mikey. And I kid you not in the last 30 seconds, you know, we we're moving him around and we we're both working on like finishing touches on either side. And then we set him up on the table at the end, you know, they're like, hands off, bricks down. You know, we set him up on the table and we're like, Whew, all right, that was crazy. And we looked down at the table and in the last 30 seconds of just moving them all around, um, we had knocked off, a couple of those brackets from the back legs oh. and so there's this spot where there's just like it kind of looks like his leg has been like skinned almost you know just <laughs> right down at the bottom and the judges was. actually yeah in the feedback they actually said um jamie was like even though you know you have that little issue right there at the back like he's like the rest of the mile is so good like we don't even really care <laughs> right exactly it's it's just like your eye is yeah. directed to other places in the model yeah, yeah. yeah we were really kicking ourselves because we even stopped and kind of looked him over just in the last minute or two like okay is he look good from every angle let's step back but we were kind of looking at the new work we had just done yeah. the mm -hmm. legs had been done for a while and um yeah we just missed it just a couple little chunks fell out but he still lives in some producer's yeah. office yep. <laughs> somewhere. That's, that's we might okay. We all question. missed it too. So <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll try. Um, we'll try to find out. Yeah. Try to track him down. Go go um, visit Mikey someday. It would be fun to see what his owner thinks, you know, of all people who should know him and his personality to see if they thought that we represented him well. I can I've speak been... to that. Oh, yeah. I have, have, I have messaged back and forth a fair bit with the owner because mm -hmm. uh, so we ended up connecting on Instagram afterwards and they were absolutely delighted with the model. They thought mm -hmm. it was a brilliant representation of him. Uh, I have a dream. We'll see if it happens. Nice. I'm actually rebuilding Mikey on my own time. Mm -hmm. um, 
in, in the way that I would, you know, that I would like to do it. So, mm-hmm. you know, sort of like this, but, but next level, um, with some additional polish and a little awesome. bit more attention to some of the anatomical correctness. So, uh, I, I like we'll see if it happens. I dream about yeah. it. So I've actually I've actually messaged back and forth quite a bit and they uh, they loved him and they really wanted to take the Lego model home. So <laughs> that's for yeah, cool. that was, yeah. yeah, we were like, all right, even his owners were like, You you did a great job capturing yeah. him. So I think for me, if, this is probably a highlight of Oh yeah. Absolutely. And model. and also Mikey liked you too, you know, that yeah. movement that you know, you guys all bonded together and and mm-hmm. we have been in touch with Smurf's owner as well as Colin's owner. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah awesome. maybe after the stream we'll we'll connect you know st- uh, connect up with uh, Mikey's owner too, so we can get them all mm-hmm. on the show to just talk about behind the scenes mm-hmm. from you know the owner's point of view, seeing That'd this whole fun. thing. That'll be fun. Yeah, we'll let you know. We'll definitely let yeah. you know when that happens. All right. Well, uh, next up we have uh, the pirate ship episode. Yeah, um, so the coral seas. I love pirates. So this this was one of my favorite episodes this season. We have okay, yeah, and here's our captain. Uh, yeah, do you guys want to tell us more about the, what the captain and the ship here? Dude, Brendan, with the streaming issues, I've I've been taking up all the time. You should take this one away, bro. Mm-hmm. He's still there. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, all right, here we go. <laughs> it looks like Brandon, I think I think you're still muted. Um yeah, what we can do too, since we were talking mm-hmm. about maybe doing another segment just on the techniques, then uh, when Brendan's back at mm-hmm. you know a better place with streaming point, capability, yeah. we'll, we'll we'll give him some time okay. to, to talk about the engineering behind the that, scenes. That actually yeah. That would probably like honestly, you could even just do that with him because when it came to you know engineering anything, like I just I just let him lean into that strength, and so he is certainly the mastermind of most of the engineering challenges. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on this ship, one of the things um, that we wanted to do was this was a storytelling challenge, and so it's Mm -hmm. really important when you're on the show to consider what are the key points that the judges are looking for. And one of the things we would do immediately after the brief is we'd go back to our table and then I would actually write down key words from the brief. Okay, it's this, it's this, it's like these. If there's like three things or four things that we're thinking of, like, uh, so the castle challenge, for example, it's like height. So first of all, the first and main thing was it's a castle all about your character. That was the main point. And then after that, it is height and it is strength, right? So you write those things down. Hey, you back? I think he's back. Oh, Possibly, <laughs> we can Brendan? we can hear you at least. Oh, oh, he oh, you mean, all right, okay. Um, so, <laughs> so this was a storytelling challenge. Obviously, you know you, you can't just quit on the building aspects. We really wanted to be able to focus on doing our storytelling details. So mm-hmm. we act. This ship is you can think about the structure underneath as kind of like a whale skeleton. There's like a a backbone, and then there's ribs that go down, and then mm-hmm. the whole main body of the ship is actually a skirt that's draping down those ribs is kind of how you can think about it. And that allowed us to get a lot of volume very quickly in Mm -hmm. the ship because bricks are much slower to build. And then we could spend a lot of time focusing in on all these details of like the shelf coral and the coral Mm -hmm. stalks, the barnacles, the little fishmen. Barnacle cannons are great. Yeah. And And also we chose. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Um, We chose the all like pastel colors for all of our coral colors too so we felt you know that that kind of represented the coral better and you know the cannons are made from coral and um Mm -hmm. the whole idea is that you know the fishmen are really frustrated because the pirates and the sailors keep taking all these resources from the ocean so Mm -hmm. they're getting one up on the pirates now so um (laughs) yeah you there's like a pirate over here and this fishman is like making her uh scrub moss or like scrape moss off the deck Right. Uh, okay. And then, yep. There's another one that they got him like walking the plank, and there's a couple tied up to the mast. Um, yeah. Yeah. Then, we, they did show that part where they're tied yeah, to the mast. That yeah. Really and thank you. So then the captain in the back, you know, this octopus character, he's got a huge cutlass, and then he also has this ivory key in his one of his left tentacles, which is the key to Davy Jones' locker. He's trying to get his his wife and kid back. Is the story. So okay. So we we really just wanted to get um bulk very quickly and then spend time with all those details and those story elements. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and yeah, I'm just kind of curious, or... since you went with the octopus theme twice, do you have an affinity for those characters? Or <laughs> You know, I wouldn't say that I do specifically, <laughs> except I will say that one <laughs> of my... Happening. Babe, I know, I know it'll at least it'll have to happen at least eight times. But I will say that one of my favorite <laughs> I think my favorite Pixar character is Hank from Finding Dory, who okay. is an octopus. I think oh. Hank is just delightful and the animation is just so good on that <laughs> character. So I don't know, maybe in some deep part of my brain, yeah. I have an unknown octopus affinity and it just keeps <laughs> coming out in creative works and I can't help myself. So Okay. That's well, fair. I had to ask since it, it showed up twice and you do it, you do a great job with those. So yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, uh, let's move on to the next episode, which is the airborne wonder camp oh boy. Uh, where whales learn to fly. See, I was yeah. expecting an octopus in this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really Brendan. like. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. Is Brendan, Brendan here yet? No. Uh, no, I was just going to say, like, I really think you guys could have, you know, taken the idea further in this challenge. I really just didn't think you went far enough with the concept. So. It should have been more fantastical yeah. and wild, right? More, just more wild. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm as here as my phone is allowing well, me to be right now. Let's just say I listened to your comments, Greg, on Nick's show right after the broadcast. Uh -huh. <laughs> And um, I'll just paraphrase by just saying that um, there was, you know, this whole idea of take it as fantastical as you want. And then they backpedaled and said, um, we want yeah. more camp like <laughs> aspects of it. Yeah. And I think both you and Nick and Stacy had that same interpretation because mm -hmm. you guys went, you know, full bore and, you know, out there. But, um, you know, it goes back to the, the engineering on this. And Brendan, I hope your your audio is working on this because you had the double motion on that tower, which was absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. And I was wondering if you could share with us a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, let me think. Well, when we're thinking fantastical and wild, I guess, you know. So, well, first off, Greg's, if you don't know, Greg's kind of the idea guy, you know, he's better at storytelling, he's a little more artistic. Mm -hmm. So I kind of let him uh, pick something because, you know, we need to come to an agreement and then we go with it. And he said, hey, can can we do this? And I said, I think so. I'll figure it out just as long as I can have pretty much, you know, the whole time to do it because um, <laughs> there's a lot to figure out. And yeah, I actually right. considered a couple different mechanisms. Initially, I had the idea of using uh a belt with kind of a hook on it and the hook would would catch sort of a, a car on the way up and then the hook would you know flip over at the top of the belt and lower it back down again but i realized um i was gonna have to kind of build tracks that would be outside the belt and the hook was gonna have to to make sure it didn't catch on anything and it it just ended up not feeling very achievable and i wasn't quite sure how to make the hook pass under the bottom you know without hitting against mm -hmm. the ground or something like that it's, it's hard to explain. Um, I had it all figured out in my yeah. mind, but then I thought, well, let me just do kind of a, a rack and pinion where I just have the towers has a gear track on it and I just put some small gears on there. So it's mechanically simple, right? And strong. Uh, and so I went with that, you know, I figured out kind of the width that would fit inside that yellow ring because I knew mm -hmm. I wanted the, the circular motion and that seemed like the best way to incorporate the circle around the vertical motion. So I knew I wanted to fit something within that yellow ring. Um, mm -hmm. And so I kind of figured out a, a tower width that would allow me to set up some some guide wheels and fit the, the Technic system. And then, yeah, I kind of went from there. So I fitted the gears and found a nice frame that would slide smoothly up and down. And then I extended mm -hmm. that upward so that it had multiple points of contact so it wouldn't you know tilt back and forth. Um, and then the small gears are directly driven by large gears. But if I don't say that right, it sounds wrong. Um, there's a small gear driving a large gear, which okay. then goes back down to a small gear. So it's slow, but strong. If you understand mm -hmm. the mechanics of gears, um, mm -hmm. it's ultimately small driving large. And at that point, I just had to figure out how to fit the motor. So I had to add a few more gears kind of to move the motion downward, but I just applied, I guess, some of my Technic experience. Uh, and then the, the outer ring actually ended up being mechanically the simplest. Once I figured out how to fit it, 
uh, and get it to turn smoothly on those those gears, those wheel mounts, essentially. I actually mm -hmm. ended up just attaching the motor directly. You might be able to see it in the screenshot. I didn't need any gear reduction. So uh, I just put the motor straight on there. I was pretty happy with the speed oh, of it. Wow. And that was that. It's hanging mm -hmm. down below. I don't know if it's actually visible in the screenshot. Um, you can see the... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, there we go. You can see the cable yeah, there. Well, that's yeah. actually the up and down motor. Um, okay. I had to put it down far enough that it didn't interfere with the yellow ring. And it's mm -hmm. it's going sideways, and there's a there's a corner bevel gear and then a couple more gears before it hits the main drive shaft. Wow. Um, but yeah. <laughs> We're definitely going to have to have an episode of just yeah. like um, it's... Technic with Brendan, spelled with an <laughs> E and an A. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean... Also, take this introductory course first, and then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying well, not the to other thing, the other comment here. from one of the other castmates, uh, Ethan and Dom, said they they pulled you aside, Brendan, to ask if you could show them what you did for this because they were so excited and they said you spent some time with them but they said wow that was a lot <laughs> to take in so, yeah so yeah. steven and steven also asked me about it and i told them i'm not giving away my secrets till the end of the show <laughs> but then when ethan and dom asked me i said all right well since you gave us the secret box um oh. you know yeah. I'll, I'll give you my secrets in exchange for yeah. that but i wasn't going to tell steven <laughs> oh, funny. Well, Stephen and Stephen, video and crash, they're going to be coming on our show in a couple of weeks. So we'll, we'll ask them about that. <laughs> nice. It's And I will just jump in and say um, that really what this is, is this is a marvelous feat of engineering. It is. Given the time, right? So yeah. if you're an engineer, you're like, okay, well, that, that mechanism is not that challenging. Sure. But to completely design it and have it be flawlessly functional in 11 hours mm -hmm. from start to finish mm -hmm. is wild. Jamie actually said on the show, and this cut did not, this this didn't make it, it got left on the cutting room floor. But he said if they did this in a Lego, like a Lego group workshop, that they would probably spend a week designing this wow. with multiple people yeah. in a workshop. And Brendan did it from start to finish in 11 hours. And so a few, a couple of details here is, and you have that central post that rides up and down. There are those gear tracks that you can see on the outside of that post. Well, at the at the bottom, when this central ring bottoms out on the simulator, mm -hmm. those gear tracks will actually ride up a little bit. So they have like a couple, like a stud or two worth of play. They'll they'll all ride up a little bit. They can actually slide some on this center tower, no. and it'll disconnect the vertical driving ring. So that it will continue to spin, but you will not even stress the motor if you go too far. It will literally just go to the bottom. Those shafts will just ride up a little bit, just go shunk up a little bit, and it'll just spin at the bottom. And then when you go to go up again, those gears will move. They'll start reversing wow. direction. They'll grab the bottom they'll of those shafts and it'll pull it back onto the tower again. Wow. So it wow. literally even has like a like a failsafe, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. where it will actually not even stress the system by sort of like if it won't bottom out, it'll just disengage at the bottom. So it's yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. impressive. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll definitely talk mm -hmm. offline about what we can do to showcase some of that because yeah. um, I think there's several people who would be interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's truly truly mind boggling. Here's um, a question well, from the you. chat too. So after a day of shooting, did you find it hard to stop thinking Lego in your downtime? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say for me, it depended on whether we were in the middle of a challenge. If we had just finished a challenge, I was happy to just let my mind rest, go back to the hotel, not have to think about anything. Right. If we were in the middle of a challenge, it was hot on my mind. It's like, all right, when we get back to the build room floor tomorrow and we've only got three hours left on the clock or whatever it is, mm -hmm. we want to be ready to, to, you know, solve all the problems we haven't solved or whatever it is. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would yeah. echo Brendan's sentiment. I know some people would be like, oh, they didn't sleep very well before judging mm -hmm. day. I always slept like a baby before judging days. Uh, the hard <laughs> part for me was I would not sleep well in the middle of a challenge because if uh -huh. I was in the middle of the challenge, you know, you're still trying to problem solve because you can still do something about it, right? Yeah. But once you're mm -hmm. done, if tomorrow you're going to get judged, you're like, there's no point in worrying. Like, I can't change my <laughs> fate now, yeah. you know? So, so for, right. yeah, just like Brendan, it's some of those middle nights were not very good nights of sleep, let me tell you. Because, like, you just be sitting there in your bed and your gears are just turning. Oh, man. Well, we did hear from some other contestants that they had other things that caused some sleep issues, mostly with regard to hair. 
So um, Jonathan had to put this special conditioner on his hair because he had dyed his hair blonde for the show. Yeah. And his mm. scalp was burning from that. Oh. So at night, he would have to put this special conditioner on. So on top of the stress of the show, he had that. Mm. And Carrie said the same thing about his hair, that they put so much gel in his hair to put that little mohawk up that he'd have to wash it at night just so he could sleep. But uh, you didn't have any of those kinds of issues, did you? <laughs> no, thankfully not. I actually, yeah, in my case, it was it was different. In my case, I usually just stayed up too late talking to my wife on the phone. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, trying to stay connected long distance. That's good. I, That's we important. Yeah, it's important that you did that. There is not much that I will lose sleep for, but I will lose sleep talking to my wife because I'm a Yeah, subject. that's so sweet. That's yeah, that's awesome. awesome. Uh, but yeah, here's here's the putt putt challenge, and I think you guys you guys had probably the most boring basic area of the green, and you really did a lot with it, uh, with the track that you know going up and back like that. Um. But yeah, this um this crane mechanism, I wasn't sure what triggered that. Was it the dump truck when it hit the dump truck, or was that a, was there a sensor there? Or there's a sensor in the middle of the S curve. There's a motion sensor. Oh, okay. Just if you look, if you see right where the upright on the crane is, basically immediately behind that, right at the start of the second section of the S curve, is where that motion sensor is. Oh, okay. So it's yeah, kind of where this green light is. No, it's it's opposite that. If you look at yeah, the cone the side, that's so. next to the crane, it's kind of below that mm -hmm. cone, and it's pointing towards that green light. Ah. It's pointing yeah. towards that corner wheel on the dump truck, more or less. Okay. Oh, okay. Just across the thinnest point in the path. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, yeah, you just can't see it from the angle. See, these are the no, details that good. we never get from the show. <laughs> yeah, so they so, have this little app. It's called, what's the app called? Powered Up. Yeah, it's escaping me, but it's this little drag and drop programming interface, and and they've got these little battery hubs. It's and powered up. That's the motors system. and sensors. Yeah, it's a Lego powered up system, and um, yeah, so we just programmed. I started with the dump truck. I spent probably at least half the time just building that silly dump truck, but you know, once again, I wanted it to work uh, flawlessly. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. there's a there's a little motion sensor in the front of the bed. Actually, was well, the distance sensor actually, and when the ball sits on top of it it detects that it's you know cl a closer object if you will and activate the mechanism so then when it mm -hmm. came time to do the crane um i just basically used the same program i just adjusted you know the calibration uh so there's just a, a distance sensor facing across that thin point and when the ball passes by it detects an object into mm -hmm. the crane. that's really so clever because we, you know, based on the camera angles, we thought it was once the ball dropped into the dump truck, but it actually started before that based on the mm -hmm. motion, right? No, that's correct. There's two separate mechanisms going on. The dump truck and the crane are separate and independent, but they're programmed mm -hmm. very similarly. Ah, okay. So I will say a couple things about this. First of all, Brendan and I basically know nothing about golf. Um, perhaps <laughs> as evidence from by the fact that, you know, like you could never get a hole on one in this. It's impossible. Um, I mean, I guess if you chipped it over the wall at the beginning, but okay. Um, you know, in the spirit of the challenge, there's only something you could do. But you know, one of the things that we really wanted to do was we wanted to maximize the play area of the green. because It's not that big. And right. so I do think in that sense that we were successful because you basically have the ball end up going in an infinity pattern from this front corner to the back corner to the corner across through the S curve and around again. So, you know, we, we really did maximize sort of the number of things to do uh, with the green. I think maybe that front ramp was a little bit aggressive, but we, we played this relentlessly, chess played relentlessly throughout. Mm -hmm. And even me, absolutely not being a golfer, and Will is, you know, I would I would still get it up that ramp successfully, probably two thirds, three quarters of the time. So, unfortunately, I took him three shots, which maybe took away from our, you know, chance <laughs> of winning a little bit. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. some people have said they're like, it's really technically clever, but it's maybe more like a Rube Goldberg machine than it is <laughs> a golf course. Yeah, so, yeah. To my former point. Leave it to Grant mm -hmm. and Greg to over <laughs> Well, have you watched Domino Masters, by the way? 
Because no. when you mentioned the Rube Goldberg machine, this particular challenge, when you put this together, I said, this is like Domino Masters where they have multiple mm -hmm. things happening and they have to go around and, and the dominoes have to go through several different iterations. And wow. that's why I was curious if you yeah. had been inspired also by, by that or anything mm -hmm. else to do the multiple um, challenges within your your specific build. I hadn't seen this show, but I have, I do kind of like dominoes. I'd seen some big domino patterns on YouTube. I like Rube Goldberg mm -hmm. machines and chain reactions. Yep. Um, but I don't know that that made much difference because this was once again, kind of Greg's idea. And I think it was more inspired. Like you said, we wanted to kind of fill up that space and not feel like we were wasting it. The mm -hmm. other thing was mm -hmm. based on the challenge brief, we were told that there had to be at least one function that, made the ball move in at least mm -hmm. one function that the ball caused to move. And so we're thinking through, mm -hmm. okay, this needs to be interactive. It needs to be dynamic. It has to incorporate mm -hmm. power functions. How are we going to make that interesting? Well, it is really interesting. You know, it reminds me of uh, some of those video games where you can see the goal at the beginning, but you have to kind of go on the quest first and then come back. So yeah. This is a golf quest, guys. Yeah, golf quest. <laughs> How'd you feel when uh, Will kicked your uh, your bridge when he finished? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. I didn't. I was like, okay. Um, you know, <laughs> that's another funny thing, though, is, again, not knowing anything about golf, I would just switch which hand I was putting with when Ooh. I went for that for that third shot. And so mm -hmm. uh, I'm a righty, so I, I swing to my left naturally, at least by mm -hmm. golf. I guess. So I would do the first two shots to the left and then I would just switch whenever I put it. And so I could easily stand off to the side here and it was no problem, but right. Will wanted to be facing the other way. So he literally, you know, steps into our yeah. build to do it. And then they were like, Oh, this is kind of a difficult spot for this shot. And I was like, you have to shoot them all the same way. Okay. Like, I don't know to yeah. See, that's I'm a also... great perspective to know. Ignorance yeah. is not always bliss. But, but he couldn't do that for the because the cameras would have had a shot of his butt. Yeah. So that's why he had to shoot it the other way. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> he so might be able to do it both ways. We'd have to ask, can you actually putt the other way? Or were you doing that for the cameras? Because, you know, otherwise you have the wrong facing shot. Yeah. I think he was pretty consistent. But I'm also kind of ambidextrous, I guess. It never occurred to me that someone would have to turn around and stand the other way. I think that's when we realized we had maybe filled the green space a little too much. <laughs> right. Um, well, are you inspired no. now to go to a mini golf course to uh, to do some more golf? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I will say though, I am I am particularly proud of the S curve in this though because yeah, it yeah that was simple, smooth. But getting the engineering just right for that ball mm -hmm. to be able to consistently travel the whole thing. Now, it did require a, a reasonably precise sh shot. So perhaps we did just make the whole thing too challenging. Uh, for us, challenges are fun. So maybe not for the yeah. – but, um, you know, that S-curve, if you do get that shot on, and I relentlessly tested that, and it was very satisfying when it worked for it to, you know, travel that whole first section, cross over there in the middle, and then use that momentum to travel the second section, and it would set you up perfectly for the putt at the end. So that was just, yeah. you know – Maybe mm -hmm. like it's a lot harder to actually execute properly than its <laughs> visual simplicity belies. Yeah, because you have to get the angles right. The entrance angle has to line up. The exit angle has to line up with the other entrance angle or the ball won't flow through smoothly. And it'll come out at a, at a weird angle. And then you might see on the first part of the curve, we kind of built up the wall higher. That was because yeah. of our testing. It was too easy to shoot it over that wall because there's so much power on the first part of mm. the curve. And so there is, um, and then also making sure it doesn't shift or warp too much. You know, we had to brace certain parts of the curve to make sure that it stayed in place. And the brick bending is just beautiful. Mm. It's so like smooth. It. But I think that's, uh, I think Will actually got it to travel the entire length of the mm -hmm. curve on the show. Yep. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was ironic. Got it off the ramp. <laughs> yeah. That was ironic because he had come by earlier and the ramp was like the one thing he had tested and he got it on his first try. And so we mm -hmm. kind of immediately dismissed it and thought, oh, the ramp's good. It's easy. He's <laughs> got it. And we yeah. had more trouble with the S curve personally. And that's what we were more worried about. Mm -hmm. it's still well, great. It, I mean, it looks fun. I wish I could play it. 
Um, but thank you. You know, some yeah. of the some of the crew told us that they're like, "This looks like something I'd actually want to play." So yeah. we we're like, "Well, yeah. all right, at least we can make something adults think is cool." <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it was cool. Um, but all right, speaking of cool, let's uh, look at this jolly old jesters. Jolly old um, justice. Yes. Yes, feel free to your voice again. or do the voice if you'd like. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. Um, but yeah, I love this like entrance way where you have like the, both the masks in here. And I was curious like what is happening in these windows. We have the, the dog <laughs> on this side. So, and then like did they not talk about I, that on the show? No. No, like what no, is what is going on over it. here? All right. What is well, happening in this one? All right, I know, I know. So glad we get to talk about this. It's a cameo, so, uh huh. In this episode, well, no, no, not our cameo. In this episode, where the castle got smashed, you know, yeah. I mean, it is a competition. We did representations of all the other remaining teams in the towers. <laughs> so the, the two Dalmatians represent the Stevens, Stephen and Crash. They're okay. bouncing up and down, you know. And then on the other side, you have Dave and Emily, and they both have hockey sticks. So they, you know, oh my God, Emily that's Dave and, and Emily yep, with hockey yep, sticks. Yep. And then on the back, you have um, Emily oh. and Liam together, and Nick and Stacy are in there too. So we did all the other teams represented in the corner towers, that's and amazing. then we told them. We hope you survive before <laughs> uh, you know the wrecking ball hit the castle. So they didn't yeah. even show that, but we yeah, they're a little. Oh, that is hilarious. Competition. Yeah, I, I couldn't see through the other windows. These were the only ones that we could see. But yeah, oh my now, now that you mention it, that's definitely David M. That's <laughs> yep. hilarious. The oh my goodness. Say, we put a lot of fun little hidden details. I'm sure they didn't all make it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the producers say they only get 42 minutes and 30 seconds for the whole episode. Mm -hmm. and, and then a good portion of that time is for Will. I so know, that's why terrible. the builds really don't get much time at all. Terrible. But this, um, yeah, this was a really fun build. Thank you. I, I really think for this challenge, we are firing all, on all cylinders. And, you know, um, it's funny. I, I like to read the, the Reddit threads after the episodes come out. You know, you shouldn't do it unless you have thick skin. If you're easily discouraged, don't do it. But uh, personally, yeah. I find it amusing. And, you know, there are some people that like to hate on this castle a little bit. And they're like, oh, it's a pretty basic castle. And I think what is difficult for people to sort of think about is like one of the primary components was strength. And it's hard to do fancy things strong with Lego. Like that's mm -hmm. just a reality. So you need to sort of lean mm -hmm. into the brick power of Lego if you want to do things that are very strong. And I think as a testament to our strength, this castle survived better than any other castle against the wrecking mm -hmm. ball. I mean, huge part of it was still pretty much together. So, yeah. um, you know, we just, we try to really lean into the jester's character and make it all about him. Mm -hmm. And then Brendan, you should talk about how we locked in the walls, how we built and locked in the walls. Yeah. But first I want to say, I think this is a great example of how our strategy has shifted since the beginning. Episode one, you've got For a sure. very, literal spaceship very precise sculpting and details really was not what the judges were looking for here we've gone the opposite we were almost nervous about how basic and square the building technique was mm -hmm. and how how solid and uh, primitive the colors were but we're like you know what <coughs> the, the brick masters they want colorful they want mm -hmm. fun in this case they mm -hmm. want tall and strong and it's a castle you know a lot of castles yeah. are square and so we just embraced it you know and mm -hmm. we and we leaned into the decor and the fun little details and we did make it pretty tall it wasn't the tallest but it was pretty tall it, it was probably the strongest overall it was yeah um and we mm -hmm. actually had fun with it which is something the brick masters had had <laughs> told us to do so in that sense as far as strength goes this was not one that we really tried to engineer that hard um so it's worth noting that they did not allow us to use technic for this okay. build. And I'm guessing the reason was to protect the Lego parts because the way Technic snaps together, if you were to bust that, it's going to literally be, you know, snapping pins and that kind of thing. Um, but what I did was I used kind of an eye shape structure to tie the walls together. So um, it, it's hard to, it's hard to explain without maybe a visual, but there's, Think of it as there's a little cross beam down at, near the bottom of the walls, and then there's a there's a, a beam or a tie that runs directly upwards inside the walls. There are some shots another, in the episode. There's another cross yeah. beam at the top, and so it essentially crimps together 
um, several layers of the brick so that they will not easily separate, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. And we use, we built yeah, those yeah. just mm -hmm. using plates and bricks and tiles at the same color of the wall. So you would need a really high resolution in image to be able to see it. It would be almost impossible. And you'd need the right lighting too, to be honest. Um, well, we can do a special episode where you can talk about that engineering. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, essentially continue. the idea was to help hope that the walls would have to come off kind of all in one chunk. And actually the, the piece that Greg picks up at the end, I don't know if that was mm -hmm. on camera. Yes, but we saw that. Yeah, the example the of where pieces. the walls are kind of being held together um, top to bottom, th those main outer walls. Mm -hmm. And no, the walls that's, that's here are actually all double thick too. So I think there's six studs thick. And so that sort of long I-beam locks from the top to the bottom. And mm. then we also, uh, I don't remember if we did six or eight. We might have actually done eight on these. It was eight. The outer walls are eight. Okay. The outer walls are eight. But it's oh, so not only of two. <laughs> it is. And then we also, throughout the process, we would still cross lock two by eights between the two. Outer, so, I mean, that, that outer wall especially is, it's wicked hefty. Mm-hmm. Now I have to ask, the wrecking ball, is that glued? Do you know? Yeah, we're pretty sure, yeah. It's glued, right? Yeah, we were speculating about that because yeah, when they, it bounces off they, of uh, the Stevens build, I mean, mm -hmm. that should have broken that ball, right? Yeah, it is glued, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, do you know if it was Lego the entire way through or if it was like around a core? Or, it was around a core, sure. we're skeptical. Okay. <laughs> okay. It had to be around yeah. a core to get that momentum from the, the fall. I, I well, don't think just Lego would have been enough. They, I, they think probably they had it, I think they said it weighed about 50 pounds and it was mm -hmm. solid. I don't know if that volume of Lego would weigh 50 pounds, but it may not I, have okay. needed much of a core. I'm pretty yeah. sure I remember someone saying that it was built around a core. Okay. okay. Around like a weighted yeah. core, basically. Mm -hmm. just, just curious. Well, we were speculating um, yeah, about, you know, yeah. the Stevens really wanted to break that wrecking ball. So <laughs> yeah, you know, if they had just done a better job and broken it, we wouldn't have to speculate. But <laughs> it's okay. Um, so, but yeah, I don't great know if you can days. tell this, but um, the ball had a slight misfunction with their build. It didn't release as smoothly as it was supposed to, and it was kind of wobbling on the way down. And it ended up kind of skipping upwards and barely grazed. Mm -hmm their base that tan mm -hmm. uh, sculpted round base which is where they had put all of their strength yeah the ball barely yeah. grazed it because it it didn't quite um it didn't quite come down at the angle it was supposed to so it, they didn't really get to put it to the test unfortunately ah mm -hmm. well, yeah they did show the impact but they didn't show the release so that there wasn't any indication that there was anything off about that um, yeah, but yeah, that's that's weird. That's, that's good interesting to know. behind the scenes info. Mm -hmm. Maybe All we'll right. have a chance to talk to one of the builders. I think Brendan <laughs> Griffith, I think, is one of the the builders for the sets. So mm -hmm. I don't know if he's able to share that with us or not, but. <laughs> He posts on his Instagram all the time. So maybe maybe he'll give some insight into the wrecking ball, too. Perfect. And oh, we have to give you kudos, Greg, for your introduction. Now, did you ever take acting classes as, you know, in high school or? Yep. So I actually did some theater in high school and then I have appeared in a number of independent short films and also a, a bit part in one theatrical feature. Um, so sure. I've done a fair bit of acting. Yeah. Ah, and we forgot to mention the both of you that you get an IMDb credit for being on the show. <laughs> Nice. We're so in I've IMDb. Heard. Yes. That is that is not my first for sure, but okay. Uh, another one. We're waiting for Fox to finish putting all your names on for credits for Lego Master Season Three, and then mm -hmm. we'll attach yours to this too. So love it. <laughs> Great. Great. Um, well, yeah. Let's let's talk about the episode now. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's get to it. Yes. Uh, let's get to it. Yeah. So. <laughs> The people at home, they had 12 hours to build a Marvel scene. And did you guys talk about this beforehand? Did you want Thor or did you want one of the other scenes? We did want Thor. Yep. We did. We got lucky. Mm -hmm. uh, why Why was that? Did you, did you just like, like Thor? Thor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. we, we like him. And Ragnarok is one of our favorite uh, yeah. Marvel movies. So it, you know, it seemed pretty natural to pick 
out of those five, he's certainly our favorite of the five uh, characters. Mm -hmm. And I, it's fair to say he's probably my favorite um, Marvel character. So maybe only topped by Captain America, but that wasn't an option. So, um, yeah, I was, I was surprised. No Captain America, no Black Panther, no Spider-Man. I I was very confused by some of these choices, but that's okay. But, Um, um, yeah, so, so Thor it was, and again, liking Ragnarok, really wanted it. <laughs> yes. And of course, you guys had to turn in the giant brick, the golden brick this episode. Yep. Um, yeah, that was an interesting but, twist. We were, yeah. unlike, or apparently unlike previous seasons, we were required to play the brick. We had no choice. Um, I think they also had that requirement on New Zealand, if I'm not mistaken. Really? Um, yeah, but I don't know yeah, if it's, uh, if it's the New Zealand coming. episode. I think it was the second or the third to the last uh, challenge, the top four or something. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, but that, that was, made it easy for you, right? Because you could just have fun with this. This. Yeah, um, this <laughs> yeah I will say though. I mean, we we treated it just like any other challenge. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we we did not sit on our haunches at all. We um. You know, we really leaned into it. We tried to make mm-hmm. the very best thing we could and, and make a, a perfect recreation mm-hmm. as much as possible. So, yeah. Um, but okay, let's uh, go in order of the area. This was Dave and Emily, and they got Drax in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And this is a really annoying creature to make because the, of, of course, the teeth are everywhere and it's a circle, and the eye stalks are just in two different directions independently of the head here um so yeah this is what they came up with yeah i just love the color of this and the backdrop is nice as well and it sounds like they hadn't originally planned on the backdrop and they had had that (coughs) so you mentioned you were shuttling bricks for some of the teams so were you helping them with this as well we did get some bricks for them yeah Mm mm-hmm that's cool. And this uh, this platform is also really nicely done as well here. Um, yeah, I remember Dave and Emily making some comment about like, oh, we're going to build this platform. We're going to use all these, you know, <laughs> silver grill tiles. Yeah. Like, when are you ever going to have this many silver grill tiles? So oh, true. Yeah. they really leaned yeah. into it. It was great. Yeah. Uh, well, let's see. Here's a closer shot of uh, the eye stalks here. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, and they they even had some uh, lighting in these. Uh, I forget what this was. It's been so long since I've seen this movie. They're like batteries. Battery, yeah, something. This is from the beginning of the movie, I think. So, mm-hmm. opening scene. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, here's here's this this creature, and oh, that's that's it. Um, but yeah, this was a a cool, imposing creature. Um, I guess now we can move on to the Stevens. Now, did the Stevens beforehand um, let it put everybody on notice as with the Dalmatian <laughs> that like they were going to go for Doctor Strange? You're going for Doctor Strange. <laughs> yeah. Um, I I on it. I actually don't remember. I don't remember if they did or not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, they didn't they have any was, side conversations yeah. like the close up they did for the dog episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yo-Yo mentioned that this was his favorite character on the show, so um, that's neat that they got it. Um, but yeah, they you know recreated this uh, busy New York street here pretty well. Um, and this was, I thought this was funny because uh, here's Will like holding up their bus. Um, now would Will like come and you know put his hands in your builds occasionally, like? No, not unless you offered. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They might have been like, here, check out this bus we built, you know, and handed mm-hmm. it to him. But they, they would not touch your models unless you unless you offered. Okay, that's good. That, that would have given me so much anxiety. <laughs> like, oh, no, what <laughs> <laughs> um, But they seem that they forged a yeah. really strong relationship, though. Yeah. And they've been playing on that throughout the uh, the season. Like, the, uh, the sit camp. The superhero initiate training camp. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but yeah, here's our build. And I'm looking for the Dalmatian. I'm sure the Dalmatian is in here somewhere. There's a firefighter just to the left of the yeah. of, uh, bus. There's the, there's the firefighter. Um, but yeah, here's... Uh, this is the, the wheel. 
And um, yeah, this was this was cool. They just they managed to get the bus off the ground and, and the wheel. It's like it's kind of unfortunate because the wheel is mostly hidden, uh, but that is how it is in the scene as well. Um, well, they had to be very precise to the yeah. scene. Yep. Yeah. So, what were what were some of the hidden requirements for this challenge? Like, you had to you couldn't take any liberties with the image, or correct. You were not allowed to take any creative or artistic liberties with the image. You needed to, mm -hmm. as precisely as possible, recreate the given shot in Lego. Mm -hmm. So they gave you the scene for context, but mm -hmm. um, you were only allowed to build something outside of the frame if the scene gave you additional context clues. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that was you know, what the Stevens decided to do, of course, in terms of like building the one-eyed monster and stuff. Yeah, um, that was their decision to take inspiration for more of the scene beyond what right. their you know specific shot was. Mm -hmm. But the rules were precisely recreate the shot in Lego in 3D as much as possible, take no creative liberties, and only interpret outside of your actual screenshot if the scene shows you something. OK. Um, did you all have the same amount of space that you had to build, up, build on? Yep. Was it all the same area? OK. Yeah. All the same area, all required to do minifig scale. Okay. Yeah, because I can definitely see some people having to do that because at minifig scale, you know, the bus and the minifigs don't take up all of that scene. Um, so that must have been tough to have to fill it. Um, they also did a very clever job with the, the um, back wall. Yeah. With that, that mosaic that they put in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was brilliant. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty, but there's something I actually asked um, Stephen Yo afterwards. I was like, "Hey, why didn't you guys decide to switch it and build it long ways so that you could get more depth into the street? Because your street goes back far." And he goes, "I never even thought about that." Like, <laughs> so they built it sideways, and I was like, "You, you know, you wouldn't have had to mosaic as much. You could have actually built like more false facades or stuff further back in the scene because you know it was mm -hmm. kind of like a, it was a right way. It was like a rectangular area like this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So." You built across the front, but if they take it and flipped it this way and just done the composition looking in from one end, then we've gotten more, you know, long uh. street distance to do to looking down that street. But you know, it's it's easy to 2020 these things. Oh, 2020. Yeah. Well, yeah. We let me tell you how easy it is. We do it all the time. Well, I was gonna <laughs> say, we're, we call ourselves armchair quarterbacks because yeah. we don't yeah. actually do the build. <laughs> Comment it on. Is oh, a this very is yeah. different story. I'm surprised they did it this way. Yeah. yeah like, well, hey, you know, you get those. This. You'll get those haters on Reddit who'll be like, I can't, yeah. you know, the builds are so much better on Lego Masters Australia. And you're like, well, yeah, that's because <laughs> yeah. they give them like 17 hours for their first build. We have like eight hour challenges, guys. Like yeah. there's a huge yeah. difference when you have half the time and mm -hmm. five requirements. Okay. Like it's not, you know, it's not as straightforward yeah. as a. Uh, Reddit yeah. is a place where people are not as supportive, unfortunately. Uh, it you cracks know. me up. I, I have a Reddit account and I just like, you were saying <laughs> about having a, a thick skin. And I think Ethan had mentioned that if I believed all the comments on Reddit, I would hate myself yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Those two got a lot of hate on Reddit. Yeah. Mm. yeah it's unfortunate. Cool. Um, but yeah, let's, let's check out Ragnarok here. And here it is. This is, Ooh. this is Thor Ragnarok. And I like I can hear the music in the background. Looking at this, it's really cool. All right, little behind the scenes. When we when we went up to uh, present it, we walked up and they're like, "Brendan and Greg, tell us about your build." And literally in the middle of the studio, I just went, "Ah!" <laughs> and then Brendan knew like the first couple of lines, so he just like started doing the like you know Scottish rock. We whatever, come like, from the land of the ice and sea. Yeah, and then they're just like, "What?" <laughs> what just as hilarious, hilarious. Yeah. And they didn't and like, put that in the just, cut. And then they didn't put it in the episode. We we're like, we gotta well, it, do this. It, it oh, was probably God. so that good they would have had to like pay for the song if they <laughs> yeah, if you they kept it in there. Oh, they should have. You know, so. it was, it was, it was, I think everyone was like so shocked because you know, we just like we let it rip. Yeah. Turn it on. Oh my gosh. Well, that's cool. We can ask um, Fox if they would share that with us. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. Oh, here's yeah, here's the golden brick in the special case. Uh, yeah. Did you guys, did the golden brick have to stay on set or did you get to take it with you when you? No, it actually stayed on set. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's too bad. Um, well, depends. No, they had a few copies. 
Sometimes one ended up in our pocket. Brendan, you're breaking the illusion. <laughs> oh no, do we have to edit that out of this video? <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm sure. I don't fine, think but... there's any contractual restrictions against it, but like most set props, yeah, there's more than one. But, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'm actually a little sour against the golden brick for this one. <laughs> yeah. No, we don't want you to. Yeah, you know, we don't want you to say anything against your NDA contract. Oh, of course, mm -hmm. of course. Yeah. Well, no, but it was like uh, you guys were like uh, Gollum with the One Ring, and the One Ring had to had to go to a different <laughs> owner. You know. It, yeah. It rejected you guys, so. I can well, understand no, that. it wasn't quite like um, that, but well, no. <laughs> I mean, especially, you know, we don't want to compare you to Gollum because, you know, Gollum <laughs> ended up. Well, Smeagol then. We'll go Smeagol. Come on, Hub, it's long ways yes. to go yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I think that we, I, I think that we are really still very proud of this build. So again, you yeah. know, we didn't sit on our haunches and um, we, you can actually hear some conversation about it in the beginning. We literally map out the, I'll talk about that character there on the left in a second, but we literally map out the entire build in units of Thor so that we could use the minifig as a frame of reference. So ah. if you, if you line this shot up from the, from the right distance and you compare mm -hmm. it to the screenshot, it is on point, like almost almost like inch for inch i'm not kidding you like we kept stepping back we kept stepping back we'd literally be like all right this is mm -hmm. like you got to move this right here like where thor is positioned where the uh, undead are positioned like what amount of the bridge you can actually see i literally kept zooming in on the image and trying to recreate all the main features in the skyline behind so we were mm -hmm. hyper precise about the detail mapping out the whole sky to get like all the right the, the colors and transitions in it so um in that in that sense, if, if you see this from the right perspective, it really is like right on with the image of the movie, which we were which you're pretty happy about. So yeah. Now for the lightning, how did you make the lightning with all of those trans pieces? Are they interlocked in a certain way? There's actually uh, white one by plates that run all the way down from that support offset. And then ah. there's clips for all of the lightning pieces. Okay, because so, um, it goes uh, back to what you said. From a distance, it looks so so great, like yeah, uh, the lightning. But it, it's like, how did they get all those trans pieces to interlock? Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. GLS, GLS asks asks, uh, did they make it glow in post? Did they add some post production to effects to it, or did you? Uh, put any light the, bricks in this at all? There are no light bricks. Yeah, that's just the studio lighting in the transclear pieces. Yeah. Wow. Okay. We considered yeah. it. It's we awesome. we tried lighting it up. We tried two or three different um, possible techniques, and we just we didn't feel like it was effective. Um, it didn't really add anything, yeah. and so we didn't want to. We didn't want to kind of halfway put something in there that that didn't really help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I also like the way the city, you know, you can see the city of Asgard in the background, uh, but then it does go all the way across the model here. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah, that was Greg's uh, mosaic work there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, Brendan did a great job on the Rainbow Bridge. Very detailed, like super accurate to even the color pattern of the actual bridge, which we pulled from a different shot from the oh. scene. So. Uh, and then this this minifig ish that you see over on the left. Um, so they as soon as we get Thor, we're like, hey, like there's no undead minifigs in the brick pit. Like, what about the undead army? And they were like, don't worry, we have an undead army for you. Like, that's going to be supplied. And we're like, oh, awesome. OK, so we go. So they like they bring out, you know, this like container for us when it starts. There's 12 minifigs in it. Oh no. 12 minifigs. <laughs> I'm like, guys, there's 50 undead in this shot. Like, what? What? <laughs> and I was like, I can't go to the brick pit and put in construction workers. Like, that's not going to work. Like, what? Yeah. So, what I did was I found all the black pairs of legs that I could. And then I actually did brick built upper bodies. Ah. And there's a few like police torsos and stuff in there, very carefully hidden, like behind other characters and things. But I did um, brick built upper bodies with black heads and then like clips and stuff. And then I tried oh, yeah. to put the actual minifigs around the outside so that if you were looking at it from like the shot perspective, right. you couldn't really see the brick built upper bodies. 
to fill out that. So there's actually like 40 minifigs there. Because oh my gosh. They gave us so few. And I was like, I can't replicate an <laughs> army with 12 minifigs, guys. Like, come on. So, I can see you saying that to them too. Like, I what? did. I was what? like, what? <laughs> what is happening? Yeah. And didn't we throw in like a few fishing poles and other things? Yeah. yeah. So from the one shot that it's meant to be viewed from, you see all the proper ones lined up along the front edge. And then behind mm -hmm. them are hidden, you know, the cop uniforms and the brick built ones that they're just kind of wow. filling the random crowd cluster. Yeah, um, and that, that would have been something if a random city minifig ended up in that shot. <laughs> right. there, there are some cop torsos in there. I know that. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, it's amazing that they had the head shapes like, <laughs> and the legs and just the. Yeah, GLS makes a comment that only 12, that's an ass squad, not an yeah. army. I know, I know. Yeah. I was literally, like, I was I was befuddled. I was aghast. I was flabbergasted. I was like, you guys, yeah. you gave me 12 figs? What? <laughs> you know. And GLS um, also has a clarification to his earlier question. He was actually asking about the glow on the golden brick when you oh. hold it up, that that was done in post. Oh, yeah, that's post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's post <laughs> Um, now, were there also not a lot of transparent different colored bricks in the brick pit? Is that why you went with the um, kind of clear columns and the and the plates here for the? Yeah, bridge? that's a big part of it. We, I looked into using transparent colored plates on the front, and there were very few options. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like, well, we we want it. It needs to be colored because the Rainbow Road, but we also really want it to look glassy. And so I came up with that teak technique mm -hmm. where I used brighter colored. Uh, colors, which are, you know, somewhat dulled down by that layer of clear. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like I said, I really studied into the specific color patterns on the edge. So where it fades from blue to green to pink is, um, you know, specific to what you see wow. in the shot because we were supposed to represent it exactly. And we didn't mm -hmm. have a lot going on. We're like, we got a sky, we got a bridge and we got some figures. Yeah. So what's there, we mm -hmm. felt like needed to be as accurate as possible. I love the uh, bridges too. The um, those pillars you have for the bridges, yeah, mm -hmm. really nice. But yeah, that's that's tough because that's that's a lot of detail to put into something that you're just not going to see it if you just look at it mm -hmm. normally from afar. Um, but all those little details add up, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I will say one thing about and you have that shot there of the backdrop. Um, you know, Amy. Overall, they're really positive about the model, which I appreciate it. But she did have a criticism about, you know, the number of studs in the backdrop. And a big part mm -hmm. of the reason that I that I went that route, because believe me, I certainly considered tiles, was that there are a lot more color options in mm -hmm. plates than there were in tiles. So I decided mm -hmm. to go with plates because the backdrop is like 80 percent of that image. Yeah. So right. I felt it was very important to try to accurately represent the color and you know the diversity and the patterns of that sky and not mm -hmm. you know mute it a lot because that sky is brilliant in the shot and it's so much of the shot so so that was that was definitely a part of the decision behind why we decided to go with studs in the mosaic as opposed to doing tile because we wanted the color options available to us in plate yeah we needed that pale blue and the pale yellow we, like we couldn't put bright blue or bright yellow in there we could have had tiles in those colors but it just wouldn't have looked right yeah, it would have been real weird if, like, you know, the gray and the dark blue is tile, but then you just ran. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's just like, us, but yeah. yeah. Well, I also included this because this is the only shot of the uh, skyline, really, in the background. So, um, but yeah, let's let's take a look at the. Yeah, here's the sky, and then here's here's the sky, so. But no, overall, like this was like everyone loves this movie. So, uh, and this was a great representation of it. So, thank you. I'm glad that you guys were able to <laughs> figure out the minifigure situation. <laughs> like, that's that's it's very just like funny. five guys on the bridge having lunch. I mean, it wouldn't have been the same thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> five guys having it? lunch. It's like, and these guys are just, you know, watching the whole thing. <laughs> Thor, Thor, if there's like five guys there, Thor really looks like a bully. Yeah, He's yeah. Just coming in on like his lightning cloud. You're like, all right, bro, yeah. that, it might be a little overkill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but okay, let's uh, move on to Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings.
Um, and this was um, Nick and Stacy's. And here we go. We've got the the dweller in darkness here, and um, this this like waves all around. And this was also a hard scene to do, uh, especially in this dark blue color. So I understand why they kind of struggled with it a bit. Well, guys, it's been fun, but I think I'm going to head on for the night. Got some yeah, I was going to say thank yeah, you so sorry. much for for hanging out with us. But yeah, um, sorry for the rough mm -hmm. connection. Hey, no problem. And just so yeah, thanks for joining know. us. Yeah, so Brendan does spell his name with an E and an A. And if you want to follow him, go to um, at Brengineer95 on Instagram. And I think that was very clever for you to put that in your name. So Brengineer, thank you. <laughs> and make disclaimer. sure we will keep telling <laughs> people how to spell your name. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you have a good it. night. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Um, yeah, GLS mentions that the director said that uh, they'll make the army look like uh, look like an army in post production. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if they animated it, that would have been amazing too. Yeah, they they didn't animate like this this episode last episode no animations. So it's we it's we got we got nothing animated. Yeah. Oh, Carrie Wu is in the house. Hey, hey Carrie. Carrie, that's Carrie. Guys, gorgeous. Thank you, thank you, Carrie. <laughs> Um, Thanks for joining us, Gary. <gasps> but yeah, here's the Dweller in Darkness. This is a, not a fun creature, but definitely a very detailed creature. <laughs> um, yeah. And sorry, I, I guess, you know, we've been running a little bit long here, so we'll try to just kind of get through these. Uh, here's the, the wave that they um, were able to balance at the end here. Um but this is this is a tough scene. Like a lot of darkness, a lot of shadows, not a lot of like well lit, bright action. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they did the best they could with it, honestly. Um, and now we have finally uh, Emily and Liam's Captain Marvel. Uh, and this is another like really tough scene because there's nothing really. There's just like a, a monochromatic background essentially, and then just this missile for Captain Marvel. Um, but the missile is pretty amazing. Yeah, they they did do a great job on the missile, and it's it goes back to the time management, and they had they had a similar time management issue on the dog episode, mm -hmm. um, but they had a huge dog that they had to build. It, it was just yeah. my heart <laughs> out to them on 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 that episode too. Yeah. For I I will say for clarification, they did not require us to make the dogs at one to one scale. That was a oh choice. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting because a, I think a, everybody a wanted choice, to. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, so Liz and Aaron decided to do their pulley at about three quarter, um, mm. at about three quarter scale. So definitely, definitely ambitious on on their part. Yeah, they made a, a valiant okay. effort. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And and I think too that the the backdrop really worked well with you know having that flare behind Captain Marvel. So it goes back to what you were saying, Greg, about at a distance, right? If you look at it from mm -hmm. a distance, it it was definitely spot on there. Well, if you also look at this missile, the missile is like kind of deceptively uh, annoying because it it starts at one point and then it kind of increases to like these these two points of light. Um, and they really were able to kind of capture that detail here. They've got the the one <laughs> splitting off into two port points mm -hmm. of light, and these capes yeah. in the middle. I mean, kudos um, to Liam. It's wicked complex build. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. with the lighting inside too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the lighting on that cord. The cord also seemed pretty short. Uh, if you wanted to light those models, so they had to build a whole structure behind the wall. Um, but yeah, yeah, any anytime you guys use capes on the show, I'm like super excited because I love <laughs> using capes. So I, this just just made me so happy. Right. Um, and yeah, here's here's kind of how they had to attach it to the to the wall. Um, yeah, um, and that is that is the end of the builds, and you know. Uh, Dave and Emily and the Stevens were in the top. And uh, once again, uh, the Stevens won and Dave and Emily got second place. 
Um, I know, poor, poor Dave and Emily. <laughs> It's like they keep saying, maybe we're going to get the challenge this time. <laughs> and then, uh, unfortunately, of course, Nick and Stacy and Liam and Emily were in the bottom two. So, spoiler uh, alert. Yeah. Spoiler alert if you haven't seen the episode. Um, Liam and Emily ended up going home. Yeah. I um, think so sad. many people were crying on this episode. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, it really, it touched me too. And you could tell that Jamie broke down as well when yeah. he was saying, yeah. We're, we have to send somebody home. And I think every episode from now on, it's just going to get harder and harder because <laughs> you all are just so talented. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was just great getting, I got to meet both of them at uh, BrickCon as well as Remy. And, and I, I think it was just really a, just an endearing couple and just yeah, so great yeah. to see them, mother and son yeah. together building like this really sweet really kind um just a couple of couple of great people yeah and you know i mean at this point we're only we're only gonna lose one more team so yeah right one yeah. more team and then the finale well, unless, unless they twist us again you know you right, never right. Know this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> per the norm we'll so, uh per the norm we'll yeah. that's, well that's, i mean we we yeah. do know i mean we can make this announcement that there will be no broadcast next week oh, no, there's, there's, because the masked singer is going to be on for two hours i think for their oh, finale boy. and so they're booting booting the <laughs> lego masters to the following week and uh, so we're seven. still we're still looking to um, I'm still trying to line up some guests. We do have the doctors who are going to be coming on soon. We have to finalize a date and uh, the firefighters, Yo Yo and Crash, are tentatively scheduled for the ninth. But uh, mm -hmm. we really want to thank you, Greg and, and yeah. Brendan, who might yeah, be watching yeah. this later. Uh, really Thanks. great for you to hang out with us for two hours. Yeah, yeah sorry. We, we were, normally we're, don't go this long. Yeah, it was, <laughs> so it was okay. really interesting. Thanks for your patience yeah. with us. Yeah. And, and thank you, chat to GLS, uh, Devo, Spot the Magic Ninja, anybody who may be watching later as well. Uh, really uh, so much fun to be doing this show because we know it. We I think we only have like two or three more episodes to go. And then, you yeah. know, the season finale will be here. Crazy. Crazy and and so so delightful to get to know you and since Carrie's in the chat so thank you Carrie for joining too, I just wanted to mm, say you know Carrie has speaks the world of you and so very great. kind of him yeah and you missed yeah. it, our earlier comment Carrie that we mentioned about the scene where you had been putting your spaceship on the space station and Brendan and Greg just jumped in to help you out so it's really just great getting to know you uh, better. And if you want to follow Greg, please follow Greg at Ironman underscore Greg on Instagram. And we didn't get a chance to talk about this at all. We might have to have you come back <laughs> and talk about yeah, you awesome. also have this Wandering Skies official. And yeah. I, had, <laughs> I had put in the banner here, but it didn't save. So I'm going to do this right now. Oops. Mm -hmm. Oops. Sorry. It's, uh, it's not helping me. Okay. Wandering Skies official. <laughs> it's like. Uh, this is what happens when uh, I'm I'm trying to multitask <laughs> at the same time. No worries. Okay, let's try this again. You're listening to the Brickanista Broadcast Network, but what I wanted to show you instead, which I have to do this again, so be patient. Wandering Skies official on Instagram, this is and so I will say that I have contributed to your Kickstarter campaign. Thank you. That's, thank I think you. That's I'm very, number very 72 you. or 73 of your oh group. God. And I'm thank really you. looking forward to seeing your stop motion that's going to come about with that. And I, I didn't get a chance to um, participate in the challenge. I tried, but I didn't make uh, that's, deadline. Okay. <laughs> honored, honored and humbled by a contribution. That really means a lot to us. I mean, a bunch of amazing people, you know, contributed. And so this, this will be the third project that, uh, you know, we've, funded on Kickstarter, but yeah. our plans for Wandering Skies go um, far beyond that. Like this is a, this is what we hope it's a jumping off point. What we're developing is a four season stop motion steampunk oh, wow. TV show. Um, it's maybe kind of one of our big inspirations for it is actually Avatar The Last Airbender. And we have four seasons planned out and, and a lot mm -hmm. of that already written. And we've been developing the show at this point for over two and a half years. So um, you know, if we can get the funding for the full show once we get past this pitch stage, then mm -hmm. uh, yeah, hopefully there's four seasons of the coolest Rick filming that yeah. people have ever seen. That's the goal. That's awesome. 
Well, yeah. we're we're really cheering you on for that, and uh, yeah. I, and I'm really know, glad yeah. I made it into the cut because I think you had a cutoff time, mm -hmm. and I think I got in like the day before you cut it off, and it was like, yeah, very kind of you. Thank Yay. you. Thank you for and um, like during our pre-show before the episode started airing, we saw uh, we talked about Atlas um, during the run-up, so we know that you guys <laughs> can do awesome stop-motion work. So we're Appreciate we're looking it. forward to this. And oh. also, don't forget to follow Brick Literacy on Instagram as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the stream. <laughs> I always forget to ask, but please remember that uh, your likes and subscribes help the stream out, and we can get some more awesome guests like Greg and Brendan to join us. And if you want to send any snail mail, please send uh, any fan mail to P.O. Box 31956, Seattle, Washington, 98103. So thanks again, everybody. It's been great hanging out with you. And as they say on the Brick and Easter Broadcast Network, may the clutch be with you. Take care, everybody. Bye.